Okay, I call this meeting to order at 6.38 p.m. Uh, and somewhere here we have the actual agenda. It's for today's meeting. Yes, it is. Okay, so roll call. Uh, Ethan Bertrand. Present. Spencer Brandt. Present. Jay Freeman, we are all here. Next step, we go on to the approval of the very poorly made minutes. Poorly made. Allowed yeah. Any, uh, anything I, of concern? I, there's nothing particularly of concern except for the fact that uh, I, uh, I do feel like I rushed things with the minutes. Um, do you feel like you made any mistakes? Because I, I, I don't noticed think anything. I made any mistakes. Okay. But I would not be at all surprised if you did. If I did make mistakes, I, I just, I just, I just know that the uh, quality and attention to detail was not quite as okay. there. Okay. Okay. I was like fr uh, frantically going through the, the video trying to verify who moved and seconded things. Um, I see. Because I uh, need to be really careful to remember to always put that information down when I do the movement. Also, last yeah. time there was the, uh, the, what's it called? The, uh, not disclosure, it starts with the D, where you donation. The donation policy item, uh, I in my notes was simply get it from the other place. And I didn't even know the other place was. So I went to the, the, the thing that was submitted to the board and I copy and pasted that. And, but I copy and pasted out of the PDF file that was a little bit, and so then I sat there and fixed it a bunch because uh, it was just the formatting was weird. But, but then the formatting was always weird because my minutes are poorly formatted. So to be honest, I don't, I'm not very good at word processing. Uh, I don't even own a copy of Word. <laughs> so <laughs> editing the agenda template has been awkward. <laughs> I, have remote access to a copy of Word. I, I, have, to I have to say that it is very amusing <laughs> that you don't own a copy of Word. Um, <laughs> I, I think this, it looks fine to me from what I've seen in terms okay. of who made the motions. And um, I, the main th change that we made to the donation policy is in there. So do you see anything? I think it looks good. I move to, um, wait, is that move to, a, oh, move to approve the minutes of the special meeting of the policy committee on April 10th. I second. Okay, uh, any public comment? Seeing no one in the public, um, we will do, uh, we will, so all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, motion passes, 3-0. 6.41 p.m. Okay. Um, Next thing I put on the agenda was to, for the public who is not here, to uh, uh, quickly summarize the agenda and allow them to ask for any items that they would like to have reorganized earlier in case they wanted to speak to those items. Uh, there is nobody in the public, um, so I am not going to, well, there's, we're, not, we're just not receiving any requests to reorganize anything. Um, and so we can move on to the actual agenda. Sorry, we can move on to public comment, but there is no one in the audience to speak on public comment. So we will then move on to agenda item number one, which is to review the draft policy manual, which was something that was sponsored onto the agenda by Ethan and Spencer. Um, I have provided a draft policy manual, uh, which I hope has all of our current policies on it. Um, however, one thing I do know that is a flaw in the policy manual is that both Bob Geis and myself in different meetings have requested that the policy manual have a high level structure to it, which I have yet to add to the policy manual. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you have any particular feedback on anything in the policy manual or particular requests related to these things or uh, are just upset at me that I don't have more of a complete policy manual yet, you're more than welcome to bring those up now. Well, um, thus far, I mean, I think this is a great, <coughs> great manual as far as compiling all of our uh, policies we've approved. One thing that we can do is, um, I think right now, like the order that is in it looks pretty good, um, but numbering the policies numbering um, policies and creating a table of contents. Yeah, that's the high level structure. Um, the, uh, I, in fact, because there was no high level structure, I did avoid numbering them because there was then their numbers were just likely to get horribly reorganized almost immediately once there was some nice high level structure to it. Um, <coughs> yeah, so I, in anticipation of this, I have, because well, for, I'll preface this by saying all the policies we've, met, we've made so far have just been board policies because that's essentially all we have as an organization. So, except for donation, right? Ex with the exception of donations, that's correct. Um, that was not something that would fall under like the board policy. So, um, I'm going to grab a paper copy from the back here. Okay. Yeah. Go. Go ahead. I'll wait for you. Okay. All 
policies are currently board policies you're saying other than the donation policy? Other than the donation policy. Um, and so after reviewing um, some of the sample or yeah, sample policy manuals provided by California Special Districts Association, um, I took sort of the structure um, that was um, I, I derived it from the Rancho, I want to say it was Rancho Prieta, but I might just be um, misremembering the name of this community service association, but they had a, a manual of specifically board policies. Um, and I think that it'd be cool if we could, if we could start with that so that we just have like specifically the board policies. And then from there, once we've finished all of those, um, we will like actually have something that we can show the board. We can say, this is the board policy manual. Um, and then from there, um, we can start making policies as they relate to uh, services that the board decides to provide or other things such as uh, a donation policy. Um, I know one of the other things we've talked about um, are financial policies, things like that, and that wouldn't necessarily be policies of the board. Um, and so um, I can share I can share the document, the structure, uh, and we can review it together if you'd like. Um, it really just has nine sections. Um, here, I should I'll share it before I continue. Is this something that's generally on the internet? Uh, oh, this is just a Google Doc that I have. So I can share it with J, or no, Soric plus IBCSD at gmail.com. And yes. ebertrand.ibcsd at gmail.com. Sure oh wait, no, it's not at gmail.com, it's at soric.com. Be sure to um, just save the, the link so that it can be easily accessible to the public, classes. yes, correct. All right, so now I need to log into that account. As noted before, I do not have a separate Google account for SORC plus IVCSD. Ah, uh, okay. Is there somewhere else you want me to send it? You can just SORC at SORC.com or SORC at gmail.com. SORC at gmail.com will do. SORC at gmail.com. So as we're opening it up, um, I'll just start to go a little bit through it. So it's comprised of nine sections. The sections are purpose, authority and officers, meetings, agendas, minutes, rules of order, actions and decisions, committees, and conduct. Is this the board, is the policy committee work plan? Uh, essentially, it could be that. No, that uh, was called. Is that, a document? Is that, is that what document? it's called? Oh, policy committee work plan. Yes, that's what it's okay. called. Okay, then I have it. Um, and I'm logging into CSPA right now um, to see which, to remind myself which exact policy manual I derived most of this from. Um, let's see. Uh, professional Development Resource Center. Uh, sample Document Library. Uh, policies and procedures. Um, it's the Rancho Murrieta oh, Community perfect. Services District. Um, and I can share this uh, with everyone as well. Um, That's actually the one I've been studying today. Oh, interesting. That's great. What have you thought of it? It's straightforward. Mm -hmm. that's, what I, that's what I was thinking too. And oh, I mean, it is truly just for board uh, Board procedures. Certainly. It's for board procedures. Um, it looks like it's chapter two of a wider document that's just the district code of ordinances. Um, and um, I, modify, I modified it slightly and in some instances might have just simplified it um, based off of what I thought um, we would have a ne like necessity for. Um, but I can share this link as well. I'm going to paste it on the board policies document, work plan, or the work plan document. And I think that you can still access it even if you don't have a CSDA login yet. You do have, I do have a CSDA login. But you do have a CSDA login, so, okay, there you go. But it will take me a second to obtain that, so. <laughs> 
And just looking at this so far, Spencer, mm -hmm. many of these we already have, which is great. Mm -hmm. so exactly. Just ordering them. Definitely. And of course, given that we are the policy committee and we're ongoing, the two big things are that one, we will from time to time be asked to take on things such as a no nation policy, which doesn't fall under a board policy uh, per se. Um, and we can also, um, I mean, we can still take actions on those. And uh, we also can go back and amend whatever it is that we approve. Yeah. Um, but I think it's just good just from an optics standpoint um, in terms of us being able to say, like when people say, what is the policy committee done? we provided everyone with a board policy manual. Um, yeah. And we can consider these things uh, one by one um, and sort of have this kind of a work plan. Absolutely. And honestly, uh, we're not too far out, I think, from having a complete preliminary board policy manual just by looking at the contents of, of this consolidated work plan and then also the full table contents of some of the other policy manuals we're pretty close to having all the board policies set up. And after that, I think it'll be really important for us to move on and with the same intensity pursue district policies. Oh, I agree 100%. What are your preliminary thoughts on this, on this structure, Jay? Um, the enacting clause, let me review to before I say something because I don't want to say it incorrectly. Uh, the enacting clause is um, if there's a resolution, um, there are obviously a bunch of whereases, and then there's the uh, either sometimes the enacting clause is be it resolved that this body. Um, does uh, this or this body takes a position on this? Rancho Marietta is be it ordained by the board of directors of the Rancho Marietta Community Services District as follows, and then it has the okay the resolution. Makes sense to me. Um, but again, I will say, and you can cross-reference this with Rancho Murrieta's uh, policy manual, is that there were certain things that I um, did not include, um, whether they be um, in the section that Rancho Murrieta has on committees. There are a lot. Um, they had specified sub-policies for um, different standing committees that they had, um, and that's something that I think, I mean, we can consider that when we go through committees, but I didn't structure it like so. I just structured it. Um, as having uh, standing ad hoc, special, and subcommittees. Okay. So I'm thinking it would be in our interest to just adopt this as our work plan for um, creating a board policy manual. Um, and I mean, we already have a lot of it here. A lot of this is in yeah. here. And this is in a way like kind of the table of contents structure. Um, and things can be pieced inside of it. That works for me. I'm happy to reorganize this to fit your plan. That's awesome. Yeah, and I think um, from, from what I'm seeing here in this item, we can't authorize a work plan, but mm -hmm. you can keep in mind this structure. I, do you think okay. that would be an appropriate way to... Um, let me just review the item again. Uh, I think this is part of providing feedback to me. Um, yeah. That to here is a yeah way of organizing the document. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that you can provide also official feedback to me in the form of a motion, personally. But yeah. Absolutely, but I don't think we can say it as creation of a work plan. We yeah. can say structure Maybe the agenda as you could say you could say structure the policy manual in this form. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's fine by me. Um, I don't think we necessarily need. Do we need to direct him to do that? I, mean, I, I think do that it. you've I seen. Mean, it. I, I believe he'll do it. Um, this seems in 
my opinion, like it would be an easy task for um, in, an intern that's assigned to you to go and piece this stuff together. Um, but other than that, yeah, I don't think we need to direct anything. Okay. Cool. Anything else you want to do on the agenda item review draft policy manual? I don't think we're going to be directing you to do better. Okay. <laughs> I direct myself to do better. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're doing good. I I think I think that this is good. Um, we don't I'm, because even uh, so even when we were talking about this the structure of like how things um, like what piece of code would be attached to what thing mm -hmm. um, that's something I think that could even wait till the end so that it's as, it's as clean as possible. Um, so I think the way that we have it structured right now is is fine, and then like piecing it together into the new structure should be pretty seamless. Okay. Awesome. Cool. So are we done with this item then? I believe so. Okay. And uh, just in case there's any public comments who would like to make a statement on that, we still do not have anyone in the public. Moving on to agenda item two, reconsider striking the word slanders from decorum policy. Um, this item was sponsored by a combination of initially Natalie, then a modification from George, and a uh, push from a uh, member of the public, particularly Jeff Bard. At the full board meeting, Natalie wanted to strike the word slanderous as used in the decorum policy. We decided not to do that as policy committee. But George and Jeff provided some arguments that we should. This item will consist of another discussion on this wording, taking new information into account. Um, so the particular thing um, is that at the last time we discussed this, I pointed out that because slanderous is a legal term, I am generally okay with the word slander because it is effectively impossible to utilize against somebody, which is an awkward reason to be for something because it effectively means that I'm telling you that I'm, I'm for this clause because I don't think it will ever happen. Um, but uh, it was pointed out at the last board meeting by George that um, if the president of the board were to make such a determination um, during a meeting and claim that somebody was doing something that was slanderous, um, that that is awkward because they are making a legal claim about something. Um, one could imagine that be coming up later um, either um, in court um, against the person or could come up in court against our board because we have effectively now made a slanderous comment about somebody because we would have to use, prove the statement and all of those things. Um, we also had a comment, a very strong one, from Jeff Bard at our last meeting threatening to, uh, I believe it was, a, it was threatening to sue the district, but um, I, it was, I don't remember now if it was if we used it against him or just having this clause in the thing. Um, I don't know if either of you remember the contents. I think it was, it was unclear to me. I, um, I mean, without but, making any value judgment on it, I think he was saying um, just by having it. Okay. Um, certainly, I, I will make the comment that um, if we can generally find wording, which, which it's, a, it's a miserable position to be in, but because we do not have um, any legal advice uh, from a district council and because we do not have any insurance, um, if we can accomplish goals in ways that make people less likely to claim that they're going to sue us, maybe that's a good thing. I, I generally um, agree. But so for, for what it's worth in regards to this, um, Jeff Bard sent me a Facebook message uh, okay. five minutes ago. I think Ethan, you indicated he sent the same thing to you. Contained in it was an article from Michael Reeder, uh, municipal attorney with Milligan Attorney, Beswick, Levine, and Knox, LLP. Um, and the title of the article is called, Can a California Local Public Official Sue for Slander or Libel Defamation? Um, and so it basically just overviews whether or not um, a local elected official could, you know, as it says, sue for slander, libel, or defamation. Um, and it overviews um, a couple, oh good, I'm glad you found it. It overviews um, a couple of Supreme Court cases um, that deal with the issue. Um, Ethan, if you want to continue on that, I, my computer's being weird. Sure. Right now I'm just looking at various different special district uh, language for rules of order that include it, which include the Rancho Marietta uh, policy manual that we were looking at earlier, as well as the San Inez Community Services District uh, rules. Um, I'm right now reviewing the Elvis Recreation Park mm -hmm. District, but as far as the specific, <coughs> specific information you're talking about, I haven't seen his, his message in full. Okay.
Yeah, well, I do have to say it is curious to me that it keeps occurring in all of these policy manuals. Um, and I think that another one of the things that would be nice for us to know, kind of going back to one of the points you were making, Jay, that you the concern about is whether or not the board president exercising his discretion to eject someone from the room for the and enacting that clause in our policy manual would be a legal determination or an, like an accusation of slander um, or whether like would it because I don't think it would carry the same weight as like if the board like if someone made a motion to accuse someone of slander or something like that and then it was seconded and then it went for comment and discussion and was passed. I, I think those two are kind of separate things in my mind, but I'm I'm not all too sure. So this actually I I initially forgot and somebody else had mentioned to me in an un, I think in an unrelated context weirdly um, that. Uh, as a public official, you effectively can't be slandered in many ways, which is why I think the point that this article is making, um, which also kind of then calls into question the entire purpose of the clause. Um, oh, what about when the... Oh, you can be slandering somebody else in the audience. Thank you. Thank you. That's where I was going. Yeah. And I mean, even what we have is much more... Um, Base the baseline than say something like the out of the directors and park district manual where it says the no boisterous conduct shall be permitted at any board meeting. Uh, persistence yeah. in boisterous conduct yeah. shall be grounds for summary termination by the chairperson of that person's privilege of address. Yeah. Hmm. And I think there was a reason that we didn't consider something like that. We yeah, we, we did discuss that but word at one of our first meetings. Yeah. I don't remember the word boisterous coming up, but okay. I don't remember the word boisterous either, but I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I went to the Park District Manual and did, wait, what was that word I want to control F? Oh, boisterous. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, as, as far as the slanderous, we, we do see it in a few other, in a few other manuals, but I do also understand the desire to remain cautious, and also, I mean, speaking from the perspective of the board president, as, as written, it's not a policy that I can really use because I know that I am incapable of making that judgment of slanderous and uh, barring unusual circumstances, my predecessors will most likely be in a similar position as myself. Successors. Successors, thank you. Um, with uh, with how to how to make that judgment, so maybe we should look to get something that is more useful. Because mm -hmm. right now, I guess what it could look like from the outside is we have this. Bi it's kind of like a threat because it's something that, oh, you can't do this. Um, and in our policies, it says that the board president can take action against you, but they're not going to. Um, <laughs> But they might. We could also just remove the, um, now we, have, we fixed the rest of the sentence to allow us to make an easy modification. If we just remove making slanderous remarks, sorry, just remove slanderous remarks or, then we're left with the president may eject any person or persons making statements that are not germane to items under the subject jurisdiction of the district. Mm -hmm. And then we still have the or otherwise disrupting the meeting or hearing clause too. Yeah. Which that yeah, part. Um, yeah. Refusing to abide by a request yeah. of the president or otherwise disrupting the meeting. Yeah, and if someone is making a like, say, a remark against another person in the audience that has nothing to do with what's considered being considered, that's not germane to the items. Um, mm -hmm. I'd be comfortable with that. And my biggest thing here mm -hmm. is the, unfortunately, um, having a, a a clause with the otherwise disrupting the meeting because at times there may be um, complete obstruction that we need to avoid. And as long as we have mm -hmm. that, uh, I think that is something mm -hmm. important to have in the toolbox. But um, I'm, I'm okay with moving forward on the slanderous, even though, because we've kept it in here because the three of us have seen the precedent and we've seen, um, we've, we've seen examples of this being used, but at this point we've had complaints from our colleagues and we've had complaints from the public. Maybe it's the right time to move on taking this out. Yeah, okay. yeah I, I, I agree with that. Um, 
I think that given the fact that it is essentially Keithless, and I think you said it best when you said it kind of might come off as just a threat, but an empty threat at that, and we've discussed it enough that everyone should know it's an empty threat <laughs> by this point. <laughs> um, so I, I, I would be supportive of, of striking it, um, amending this policy to strike okay. it. No, here's my question. When we discussed this, we um, did we discuss in that... Um, in that sentence, because it says statements that are not germane to items under the subject jurisdiction of the district, did we discuss how um, if that should be specific to the agenda item being being heard at the time? Because someone may be, sp and I mean, I'm trying to. Uh -huh. We can review that in later talks in a in a separate agenda. I, I, item. I don't. I don't. To me, it does not seem correct to when somebody's making a statement that is outside the jurisdiction of the agenda to I, I arguably also even not germane thinking about it items of the sub jurisdiction asking them to stop speaking sounds better than just throwing them out of the room oh uh, yeah. <laughs> it just, yeah it just occurred no, to me that like yeah, the whole, no. this whole clause is that <laughs> is that we can eject you yeah the board president has <laughs> discretion to interject yeah. and remind someone that they are not speaking at an, um, on something that is germane to like the motion at hand if they're making c public comment on a motion. Um, this is specific to the ejections. To answer your question about whether we discuss it, I think very briefly we did. Okay. All right, so um, I'd like to make a motion to strike the words, quote, slanderous remarks or from section five decorum of the rules of order for board meetings policy. And I'd actually like to amend my motion. Do you need a second first? Okay. Second. Thank you. Uh, move to recommend to the board, or rather, move to recommend. Was that, was that the phrase that we used? Let me check out our minutes. Recommend that the board amend, I believe, is the word we were using before. Right. Recommend that the board of directors amend the following policy. The following policy you want? And then colon section five decorum of rules of order for board meetings. And that's friendly. Sorry, I've completely revamped. This. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just looking at what I think and we've then, done before. And it's a super motion now. You we want the entire replacement text, maybe? Because that's what we did before, and you seem yeah. to be trying to pattern it after. Oh, yeah, we could do to read as follows. Hey, Jonathan. Okay. And then there, we're just taking out uh, slanderous remarks or. Okay. Friendly? Friendly. Okay, so uh, a member of the public has just appeared. Do you have any comment on this motion? I the, the motion is to uh, move to recommend that the Board of Directors amend the following policy, Section 5 decorum of the Rules of Order for Board Meetings, to read as follows. Uh, the president shall take whatever actions are necessary and appropriate to preserve order and decorum during board meetings, including public hearings. The president may eject any person or persons making statements that are not germane to items under the subject jurisdiction of the district, refusing to abide by a request from the president or otherwise disrupting the meeting or hearing. As summary, I will say that this is simply the previous policy with the words slanderous remarks or removed. Right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes, 3-0 at 7.08 p.m. 7.08 p.m. Okay. 
Um, any more on this agenda item? <coughs> okay. Moving on to agenda item number three. Consider enacting policy on adding items to board meeting agendas. Jay is now requesting that there be definite policy on agenda items followed by a presentation to the board on how agenda agendas will work. During this item, we will consider enacting and placing such. Um, I just very unhappy. Uh, there is so first, first it's like okay, I wanted more ability to have more information and discussion on these items, and so then I brought that to policy committee, and we had a discussion about making certain that there was was information, and I, and I talked about it with other people, and I, so I ended up putting together this like this like letter of writing, and then I was told I shouldn't provide a letter, and that, that I mean. And we, the last meeting was that it was okay to provide a letter, but that the letter should not be like providing. But people were, some people though, were upset at my letter about the uh, um, making it look like it was coming from the board or something it was attached to the agenda. Um, and so, um, and then we had during the uh, the item which was um, um, an item from uh, Ethan, which was about the internship program, which had a presentation. And so then during the next policy committee meeting, I brought this back and I asked again, and it was I was told that okay, well you know you should provide that information during discussion and then you can have a presentation. And so then I, I patterned the item off of the Board of Supervisors um, where it has like, you know, receive and file a report from and I did the presentation, I did a presentation. And then the very first thing I get hit with when I go into the meeting is Bob Geis telling me that um, uh, the exact same complaint that to go back to the beginning of the whole circle that I provided in the first place, which is that we should have more information ahead of time. Um, so I, I then was kind of personally disappointed at the fact that I was I feel left out to dry there and there was no there was no like actually Bob from any of the official people who were essentially telling me how to structure these things this is how Jay was supposed to do it um, I would now like there to be a policy on this I don't think it's I don't think it worked I, I think it was the, the idea that this was just going to be something that was going to um, be able to be satisfied through um, expectation I don't think will function and I would also like to see this be presented during a board meeting as opposed to simply being in an email and a PDF file um, Wait, but go back to one yeah. thing you just said about how this was what you were supposed to do. Did you get direct? Did you feel that you got direction on to to do it exactly that way? Because I know after I did it that way, I apologized for the short notice and said that in the future I would. I feel like I had direction from the two of you during the during the policy committee meeting that that was that I should be doing these things during discussion, that I should be providing that background during discussion, and that I could do it in the form of, for example, a presentation. But but here's another thing: if I'm wrong. That's part of the problem. Is that I don't I, I don't understand what's going on here. Like I do feel like I followed the the PDF file. I mean I read that thing like three times that day in order to make certain that I like followed the PDF file uh, of expectations. And I don't think I screwed those up. But if I did, it's also it's like that's part of the problem. I would like there to be a I would like this to be policy as opposed to expectation. And I would like to be presented to the board to make certain that we are all on the same page. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think we need to formalize it. And, and, and by the way, and I'm I not, feel like we're disconnected in a, Yeah, and I'm not super concerned. I'm not also not like demanding that this happen today. I'm just like uh -huh. this initial thing. If you guys want to like think about it more and come back at this next time, I'm just yeah. agendized it so we could have this conversation. No, certainly, yeah, and and I think that I I will say that my initial concerns were much more in the realm of board members providing um, some sort of a document that looked something like a staff report if it was coming from them because in my mind there's a separation between work that staff of a district or of any sort of body does in terms of forming the research and the fiscal analysis and the um, information that board members provide for advocating for specific policies or programs or whatever it is one of them is a function of the legislative which is what we are as board members we want certain things to happen and we have um, our own like you know goals for how things happen and the other is staff which is at our direction of which we don't really have any the closest thing we have to it would be the interns and that's not even they're not even truly staff um, and so that was always kind of my main concern whether that sort of staff reporty type of thing was happening in the form of uh, the item that was being placed on the agenda um, or whether it was being performed as a um, letter or some sort of document being attached to it is just that I wanted I wanted board members to be clear that if they were going to bring an idea to the board they should not try to pass it off and pass off their the own research that they've done as official district research that the district has done 
And so I thought your presentation by and large did a pretty good job of like making sure that you were um, like that, that making sure that you were making everyone aware that the ideas were like your thoughts and opinions. Um, I also agree with Ethan though that it would have been nice to have it in advance and I think that's kind of the comment that Bob was making rather than him telling you like I don't want you to do this anymore. But I, I don't understand if I were to provide that in advance it would have been essentially a staff report provided by me. And that was the kind of thing that I was told I was not supposed to do and which you just said that I was I not know, supposed to I do. I know, I now see what you're saying. Okay. So I, I, I don't, like, I, I, I'm, I'm okay with, I mean, I, I, would, I, I have my preferences, but I'm okay doing either, being told that by the board, but I do not appreciate the idea that I've essentially now gone through this in multiple directions and essentially I, I feel like I'm just being told, no, Jay, don't do anything. Um, well, so, you're not being told that. Yeah. But, but, then, yeah. but uh, you at least appreciate at why I might feel that way because it's like I go in both these directions and then it's like no, no, no. But I mean, we're all feeling that yeah. way. I, so I okay. wouldn't say particularly to you. But um, one thing I want to say, because I know right now we've been thinking a lot about, um, oh, that might look like a staff report. But if you think about the county meetings, there's another type of report that looks just like a staff report but comes from the other independently elected officials, whether it's a report from the sheriff or district attorney or auditor controller, where they're providing the same type of report that's very similar to that that staff would provide, but obviously on a pointed angle from their office. Um, and if a director is submitting something similar to that, I think it would be appropriate as long as it's clear that it's from the director um, to the larger board. Um, I can't think of necessarily examples at the Board of Supervisors of individual supervisors presenting to the board. I can give an example. Okay. Um, Phillips 66, the oil train, the third district office did give a presentation where they provided background. Now granted, that may not be the best example uh, for this situation given that that was an issue that certain supervisors thought was divisive and certain supervisors Left. decided that they were going to leave the room for the discussion of. Um, but nevertheless, the third district office, the person presenting was uh, the chief of staff for Supervisor Hardman. And the presentation was um, background to on the Philip 66 oil train um, and where it would go and how much oil it was taking and things like that. Yeah. Um, and um, again, that was a very, um, that was very much a positional issue given that the board eventually just voted to send a letter to the San Luis Obispo County Board of Supervisors. So um, it is a little more, I don't want to say like um, ceremonial, but in a lot of ways, given that it's not uh, something that affects the, uh, or it's not an item that directly would change the direction of their staff or their departments, um, it is a, a little bit different. Um, but I do see what you're saying. Yeah, um, and I now actually remember also there was a meeting, I think it was the Isle of Vista Safe Report to the People, which I know you would have been at that meeting. I think the third district supervisor at the time actually presented part of that presentation to her colleagues along with uh, the district attorney, mm -hmm. but the supervisor was the one making the presentation. Oh, I've now Did she? I can't remember that. Hmm. I remember I the district so. attorney making it. I well, definitely remember that. But yeah. Yeah. But I've also seen multiple of the versions of that because it also came up like partially during one of the budget workshops last year. Yeah, it also came up. I'm thinking of it was last April when it came up. It was actually probably around this time in April, maybe a little earlier in the month. Well, with that, I definitely remember Supervisor Farr okay. giving some mm -hmm. presentation with a PowerPoint to her colleagues. But I think here we've kind of confirmed what we were discussing. About, yeah, like, yeah, definitely. It is. It's not completely abnormal for a member of a legislative body to present as long as it's framed that it's from them and not from the district, the, the board at large. Yes, no, I agree. Um, yeah. So is that just a matter of making certain that it says something like from Director Freeman to the board of super, sorry, to the board of directors? Or is there something like what is required in order to have this property that you were now describing of I think that's a com that's definitely a component of it. Yes. Um, and while we're speaking of this, I'll go back and look at, uh, for example, the Phillips 66 presentation as agendized by the Board yeah. of Supervisors. 
what I think is that this is a small part of a larger agenda policy, because that's something that we haven't set yet. Mm -hmm. And in looking at a lot of these other um, policy manuals, and including, I believe, the structure that we were looking at before that you're going to check out for mm -hmm. formatting, there's a complete agenda section, which lasts like two pages. In there is um, the process and procedure for how a board member can request to place something on the agenda. In there may be a consideration of a consent calendar, um, and then also how a member of the public might be able to request an agenda item. And that's actually, I thought we were going to be talking more about that today with this agenda item. So I have some ideas for that too. But I think once we figure out the process for getting something on the agenda, within that it can be made clear who's requesting this and who's presenting on it. Okay. I agree. I agree. Any commentary from the public? John? Um, I would suggest that whatever agenda policy happens includes a strong emphasis on committees and the role of the committees in the agenda. So like you might send it to the board, but then it goes to a committee first, then something like that. But a strong emphasis on like the use of committees before putting something on the full board agenda. Absolutely. Um, are we, does everyone consider us to be agendized to discuss something related to that on this item? Because I would have more commentary on that. You can respond to direct public comment. It'll open a conversation in this particular case. Well, you have Jay. Jay is now requesting that there be definite policy on agenda items. But we'll consider enacting and placing such, so. And how agendas will work. And how agendas will work. Yeah, like that's actually what I thought we were talking okay. about mm -hmm. today. So, mm -hmm. so this is actually I mean, something that came up during that last meeting. Um, not during the item, but much later, uh, George stated that I had, quote, bypassed the committee structure um, by bringing an item before the board. Um, now, of course, in order to bring an item before for example, formation committee, which is not even clear to me would have been an appropriate place to bring such an item, um, I couldn't because I'm not on formation right, committee. You have to get rid of um, it also is not clear to me that the goal of formation committee should be to look into essentially everything related to the board. Um, my original impression was that it had a scope of essentially just assur insurance and accounting and it is slowly scope creeped up to including lots of things. That's um, right. But I'm not. Like, it, I think it would have been weird for me to somehow have put it to formation without an ability to provide any of the, and, and I will also then state that I was, my understanding of how committees are supposed to work is that it's not a proving ground for things. It is not a, there shouldn't, like, that things can always go before the full board. It is just that things can start in committee as an easier way to jumpstart things. Because otherwise you end up in a situation where you essentially have three people who, whatever committee you've chosen, who actually control the board's subset of those actions as opposed to simply being advisory. Like if you require that items of a certain form go before a committee before they go before the board, you've limited the board's ability to ever discuss those things to those three people. It's no longer advisory, it's actually a, 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 a hard filter. Um, and so I, and that, that, that was part of what made me so absolutely upset when that comment was made during that meeting on, the, on that particular item. Ethan. How I interpreted Director Thurlow's comment there was more of a response to um, to your concerns with a standing committee moving to an ad hoc about a lack of transparency. I think with that comment he was mainly pointing out where's the transparency if, if a board member is just preparing all of this and bringing it to the meeting. What's the difference between that and ad, ad hoc committee? I think that was the main thing that he was talking about. So, But he I'm also not, added the, and bypassing the committee structure. I think this is a separate conversation we had about that first part of the comment, but he also specifically stated bypassing the committee structure. Okay. Um, okay. Well, ultimately this policy that we come up with should make that clear whether, uh, I mean, I think you said it very, you made a good point where if, um, you wouldn't be able to agendize something for a committee that you're not on. Yeah. So it does have to yeah. come before the board. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. 
And the board could always have decided to punt that item to a committee, um, which actually George did bring up, um, and then it immediately got shot down. Right. And that's something yeah. within our rules of order, yeah. you move to refer to committee. Yeah. That's true. Uh, so real quick, on a slightly tangential note, if I could just mention the kind of the three different uh, three different procedures I've found for getting things on a agenda based on request of board member. Um, first, I'll actually go to the Santa Barbara City College Board of Trustees one, which I found helpful. Um, a member of the board may request that an item be placed on the board agenda by discussing the item with the board president, who may place the item on the agenda as part of his or her responsibilities. Um, in the event that two or more board members submit a request in writing that an item be placed on the agenda, that item shall be placed on the board agenda. Uh, the item may be noticed for information, discussion, or action. So, can you, can you repeat the part about two or more? Yes. And in the event that two or more board members submit a request in writing, which we don't need to consider how it's submitted at this point, um, request in writing that an item be placed on the agenda, the item shall be placed on the board agenda. So that's pretty much, right now how we have it is, if a board member requests an item to be placed on the agenda, it's on. Um, and that's really just the procedure that's been there in the lack of policy. Um, this would make it where the board member would, would need to present it to the board president. Um, and at that time, the board president could place the item on the agenda. Um, if it doesn't have the board president support, so to say, I guess that's one way to put it, um, then it would the director would need to have another director also request it. Um, I'm, I'm interested how that works on a, let's, let's, let's take, yeah, take, take a five person board, um, which luck, arguably luckily right now we're not, but um, yeah, if you talked, actually is the Santa Barbara City College Board of Trustees? Uh, no, seven. Seven, okay. Well that, 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 that case explains part of that, because mm -hmm. otherwise it's like you've talked to the board president, and the board president yeah, yeah, yeah. clearly has stated that they're not sure. interested in it, now you've actually, you know, we've got to find Can't a third person, and, oh wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> But seven people that works. Yeah. And then if we have, we'd have to figure out how to have the board secretary involved, though, too. This um, is really, another problem with this, though, is that, okay, so let's say, for example, I've got an item and I bring it up to Ethan as board president. The board president mm -hmm. says no. Um, now I have, I guess, one chance to find somebody to talk to who I think will get it. Because if I talk to, let's say, Spencer, and Spencer also says he's not interested in it, I now have constructed three people who, I mean, the only reason I could be talking about it, Spencer, is because Ethan said no. And so now it's like yeah. information has been transferred um, member of the public. And it also precludes any of this happening if they are on the same committee with you. Wait for committees. True. Yeah. It's a standing committee, you're right. And I want to also, I'm not sure why they have the word discussion with the board president, with the board president there, but, um, yeah. Well, right. but if Jay wanted to speak to me, if, if, like, in a hypothetical scenario where we had something like this in place, and you brought, like, I don't know, something like sanitation to Ethan, and Ethan said, no, I don't think we should discuss this. You could still bring it to me because it's not in the policy. It's not an issue that's under the jurisdiction of this committee. Now, if you brought a policy to Ethan, well, you just wouldn't be able to do that because you can't. We can't speak to one another about policies outside of it. And it, we're a policy. I mean, I, we, we should change the example because I could literally just put it on the agenda because I'm the chair. Of policy. Yeah, but I, I guess what I'm just doing is addressing the the idea that we we could talk to one another about things that weren't policy outside of oh, yeah. the board. But, but 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 we still have the problem, which is that let's say that I um, bring up an item, let, let's let's choose something very neutral. I bring up the idea that we're gonna do snow removal to Ethan. Uh, okay. And Ethan is like, that is the craziest thing I've ever heard, Jay. And I'm like, no, 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 bear with me. And then I bring it up to you. And you're also like, I don't think this is gonna work. Um, I now can't bring it to Natalie or Father John or something because I've now already essentially constructed a brown act like of three people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Public comment. Also in terms of the committee comments again, for example, you have currently in your policy a policy that states that any member of the board can bring a policy before the board. Uh, please excuse me, I use a policy now four times. But um, essentially now what you've done is 
you can't talk to the board president because he's on the policy committee about the policy thing, and that would constitute quorum of the policy committee. And so yeah, yeah. there's no way for that policy to work. So then you would have to talk to Spencer, the secretary, but you still can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if we did, if we ever adopted something like this, then it would need to, there would need to be some sort of an amendment. Yeah, that. I think part of the reason why we had our very, arguing one way lenient and the other way just like, uh, like, instantaneous agenda mechanism was because of our lack of any staff and our lack that's of right. uh, that's 100 percent correct <laughs> so yeah and I, and I will say it was also because in my conversation i specifically spoke to my dad about this actually who worked planning staff for a decade or so um, with the city of visalia and talked to him about the agendas and he said well the city of visalia used to have a policy that you could, if you wanted to bring and put an item on the agenda as a board member, you during you could put it. You it had to be approved by the by the board or by there's the city council in this case. So if you wanted to put snow removal on the agenda, you would have to file something that says I want to put snow removal on the next agenda, and then it would go into a consent calendar. And if like. The other, if the rest of the council was against it, then they could pull the item from the consent calendar and say, I don't think this item should be on the agenda. And then Ethan says, Yeah, I don't think it should either. And someone else says, I don't think it should either. Then essentially, and wait, in is the consent calendar item, is that an item to hear this and then you set a hearing date? Yes. Okay. And, and then, so what would happen is that then the person who wanted to bring the item would defend the reason that they wanted to bring the item to the city council for their consideration. And then, very slowly, the discussion would just devolve into the discussion that the person was trying to agendize, and then they would thereby be violating the Brown Act because it was not agendized. So um, that struck me as a, a really, that was the only solution I had ever heard to the agenda thing that seemed like it was like rel that it was something that was easy that we could do, and even it sounded like a terrible idea. So <laughs> It's interesting, actually, because I... Um I, I, I never really think about it this way because I'm not even certain if all items are like this. But the Board of Supervisors does have that structure in a way. Um, I often with the hearing date, with the consent calendar, hearing date, then set. So, for example, when we did the um, uh, uh, Deltopia um, dates modification, mm -hmm. there was a consent calendar item related mm -hmm. to that. And then I, I was in the awkward situation where I, I speak during public comment about the hearing date. And I do make it very clear that I'm only speaking today about the hearing date. And yeah. then I explain about when, when yeah. the hearing date should occur. Yeah. But it is a funny thing is I have heard people come up and then speak about the item then. And it's, yeah. 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 And under public comment, they are completely allowed to do so. Um, you know, they're allowed to, but yeah. But, uh, but, but the board would not be allowed to yeah, but, 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 do anything more But it's kind of baiting the board is the fun thing. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Jonathan was going to say something. Um, what the policy Ethan mentioned, the part he mentioned we're keeping the same, but we're amending the policy this Thursday. Oh. Get a, not, but not that part. Um, <laughs> we're having a different part, like between the board president discussing it and two members having to ask to put it on. And that's... That mechanism is to protect the minority voice over the board president, you know, being a dictator yeah. over the board, basically. Um, but I, will, I can ask some questions, because I've encountered this issue before where I had an issue, I took it to the board president, she told me no, and then I had two other trustees who I was going to ask for a second, basically, on it. But I asked both of them at the same time. One got back to me, it was fine. Uh, if, if she had said no, I would have been in trouble, but um, potentially. So I'm going to ask because I do want to clarify this for myself as well as a board member somewhere else. And if I ask the president and then I ask another trustee and they both say they don't want to co-sponsor, not vote for it, it's co-sponsor to put on the agenda, can I ask a third person to co-sponsor? Because it's not, it is about a board policy, not about should we vote on this item or not. So I will ask and let you guys know. Cool. Okay. And if you, lawyer, yeah, this is cool. It's like I say, it's a legitimate reason for you to do this. So I'm excited. <laughs> and that would really be a bad situation if you've used up your your two friends. <laughs> and so now, what? I can never bring this to the board in this term. I suppose you so can we need ask to get again. A better, better understanding. Of yeah, that. yeah, um, yeah. But then That's with them. Um, 
the Isla Vista Recreation and Park District uh, policy, which is the same as the one I'm guessing recommended by CSDA because it's in a number of the other policy manuals on in their database. It says, um, just the chairperson in coordination with the general manager shall prepare an agenda for each regular and special meeting of the board of directors. The chairperson of the district, or in the absence of the chairperson, the vice chairperson, shall finalize the agenda. In the absence of both the chairperson and vice chairperson, the general manager shall finalize the agenda. Any director may submit to the general manager and request that any item to be placed on the agenda no later than 5 o'clock p.m. on the 10th day prior to the meeting date. The agenda is finalized at 5 p.m. on the 10th day prior to the meeting day. Um, that's actually a, their sentence there doesn't really make sense um, but the first part of it shows kind of where, where they're at where it's another kind of open system of getting something on the agenda one thing that I'm not sure of though is the first sentence it says the chairperson in cooperation with the general manager shall prepare an agenda for each regular and special meeting of the board of directors I wonder with that if there's any discretion by, okay, this director has requested this, now the general manager and the board president with the power to prepare this, are they allowed, does that give them, since they have the power to prepare it, the power to keep something off even though it's been requested? I, th I think it is implied within that, like within that policy, the way that I would read it, it seems like implied that they have that discretion. The implication doesn't necessarily mean the implementation. So I was actually True. interested in asking Ethan whether he had any experience. It sounds like you don't really, yeah. But um, it would be cool to have one of them come in and talk to you about like whether that has ever happened, what their policy usually is. Is it just like a blank check any director can request, or is there more? I mean, that's that that would be my experience there. That that it was if you requested something, it got on the agenda. Gotcha. Okay. I think the big thing in this is that. We don't have this, yeah. and a lot of these policies are written, the general manager, okay. and a lot of these policies are written with the assumption that there's a general manager or some sort of CEO or CEO's office or um, superintendent, whatever you'd like to call it, um, and that's making this difficult for us. But then what if we were to, I mean, I'm guessing by this agenda tonight, I mean by this, what we have to tackle on this agenda policy. Tonight we're just brainstorming. We're yeah, we don't have to be yeah, I'm, right. I'm, I'm not demanding anything. I'm not going to yeah. be upset if we don't do anything. I'm not even going to be I'm terribly happy. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that we're having the conversation. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. this is, yeah, so thank you. I mean, what about at the end of the board meeting when we're in agenda, future agenda items, if the pr policy was to spell out that um, a motion could be made to approve the future agenda items there, and if a direct, if so, so that's one venue to get it mm -hmm. on the agenda. If not made there, the director can put it on the consent calendar to have um, a hearing to set a, to to set the date for hearing. So, so two avenues there, mm -hmm. both both requiring um, consent from other directors. Thank you, by the way, for reminding me about the future agenda item section of things. That was the con the other confusion I had had was. Um, two meetings ago. Um, it's like putting an item on the future agendas during future agendas, well that definitely doesn't fit the current expectations because it would require putting together the written description and all the other form. And so That's correct. Essentially yeah. what I was trying to figure out is like how, what is future agenda items even for anymore if we can't use that yeah. to put, yeah. Well I, I'll tell you the way that I've been interpreting that section which is that if board members say, like for example, during future agenda items, um, Natalie mentioned that she was interested in um, striking the, well that's a bad example because we put that back here. Um, if a director wanted to bring something in future agenda items, um, I have been, I don't think I've used my discretion to like not put something on the agenda. Be mm -hmm. If it's been brought during future agenda items at this point, um, and I've just been placing them on the agenda under the impression that like I'm the one who's placing them on the agenda at the suggestion of various people on the board who may have wanted that on there um, rather than like the other system where a director sends me an email or have written notice 
and they have the item written exactly the way that they wrote it. And then I copy and paste that with whatever modifications that I make with my discretion. Um, that I consider like a director formally, a more, a more formal version than what we have in future agenda items, um, if that makes sense. It's a little messy, um, and the distinction is kind of a gray line or a blurred line, but um, I think that, I mean, tell me, what, what do you see as the difference between the policy that you just suggested and the original thing, or the thing that I was talking about in regards to the city of Visalia where the item was just brought during consent calendar and if people wanted to pull it then they could and then they would accidentally start having the discussion. Oh, yeah. just by adding one more avenue to do it at the uh -huh. end of a meeting. Okay. But also realizing that yeah there's that risk but isn't that also what we see at the county like with like yep. they do a similar thing? Yeah. Um, it's just going to be really important for people to only vote on the hearing date and discuss that. Um, and, and not the, mm -hmm. the actual proposal. Yeah. So if we did adopt a policy along those lines, um, I really like your suggestion of having some sort of a presentation to the board that says this is how this policy works practically <coughs> and this is your role and how you follow <coughs> this policy. Specifically to clarify that issue um, because I don't want to get into territory where we start accidentally having discussions that are not agendized to have. So it sounds like what we're going to do is we're going to spend some more time thinking about this and come back maybe at the next policy committee meeting with uh, more concrete ideas. And so I'll just re-agendize this for the next uh, policy committee meeting. It's a great yeah. idea. And I think okay. at that meeting we'll try to uh, finish with a recommendation for a full agenda policy. Okay. So perhaps even some more things that we haven't discussed mm -hmm. here, such yeah. as distribution. Um, mm -hmm. Even though we have an informal procedure for that right now, we don't have that all written down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as the secretary, I'd love to take the lead on that on this because this is something that I'm working through um, in terms of um, trying to figure out what work um, I can allow uh, or I can assign to the intern that was assigned to me. Um, so I've been already kind of working on certain things in regards to this. Okay, but this is very helpful. Is there any public comment on where we at now? I'm seeing none. It sounds like we're done with this agenda item. Any? Okay, so back to not here, not here, but here. Moving on to agenda item four, review policy on representation of the district at, ex at external events and meetings, uh, item sponsored by Spencer. At the previous meeting of policy committee, Spencer asked that we look at enacting a policy for how the district achieves representation at external events and meetings. A version of this policy was voted on at the full board meeting, but the request to add that item to this agenda stands. Therefore, during this item, we will quickly review that policy and potentially make changes to it. Yeah, so I'll first I'll start off by apologizing for bypassing the committee structure. I don't know. Um, but uh, my, <laughs> my, my original, um, or my thought was that um, given the, the timing um, and the fact that um, there was a, a want uh, at least by myself to have someone appointed to do uh, official external representation um, specifically in regards to the fact that Associated Students um, was voting on putting a standing item uh, on their agenda that the district could go and speak at so that they could bypass the normal uh, public comment mechanism that they have. I figured well, if we're going to appoint someone, we should have some sort of a policy that clarifies what the boundaries of that are. Um, I had no issue with you doing that at the I'm, I'm, if, if, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I was providing the background here that it's weird that it came back to us, and the reason it came back to us is because <laughs> yeah, no, you, I you had already it, requested yeah. it. I'm not going to remove yeah, it yeah, yeah. because you already requested it. <laughs> yeah, so, no, I, com yeah. I completely understand. Um, in we the don't future, have though, to do anything now. Or yeah. we could, in oh, the yeah. future, I'll try to avoid that, though, because I think that, that the conversations regarding that and the review of it should happen in committee. Um, that's what we're here for. So we also, though, we have so few policies that I mean, your com your argument about having a policy when we need a policy, I think, is it actually very apropos. And so, mm -hmm. and we can always improve the policy in policy mm -hmm. committee, which is another reason to true. kind of. I mean, very I, true. I provided we could review and potentially make changes. True. Yeah, and I have no issues with it though. So, like the actual as written. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the policy now. Um, in section three, it ends. Uh, they should make a good faith effort to clarify. So. Have you seen that wording in policies before good faith effort? 
No, I have not. <laughs> That's something that I wrote. Um, yeah. It was... So I agree with what it's saying. I'm just wondering if we want to clean that up a little bit. No, that's the way that's the way that I wrote it. I wanted to write it in s such a way that if a director went to the county board of supervisors and forgot to clarify that they weren't representing the district, that they wouldn't be in violation of right. the policy manual. But just as like kind of suggestive language to remind people, um, especially given our nature as this board, I imagine we're going to have um, folks just like us for generations and generations who have never done something like this and so it's good to have that kind of guiding language in there but in terms of like the phrase good faith effort uh, if you think that it needs cleaning up I'm very supportive of cleaning it up uh, I, ju I just saw it and I, I thought it was, seemed a little informal um, but I mean it is pretty clear what it means so if you guys are cool with the informality and perhaps you won't even see it as informal. I personally don't, no. Okay. I also didn't see it as informal, but I do see it as not direct and guiding. Um, and so, I mean, it would be difficult, uh, difficult to enforce in various ways if you actually wanted to enforce. Mm -hmm. um, but I also felt that it was clear in a way that it was not, like I, well, it doesn't provide me guidance on how to do it, it's clear that it's something that I should try to do, and so I, I had, I, I wasn't had problems with it. But if you have a different wording, I also would be very supportive of uh, any yeah. attempts at different. I, th I think this will be okay. Just okay. To check. Any public comment, Andrew? I agree with your comment that it's not very direct. I essentially get um, the the comment that you don't want it to be enforced is already in a way implemented by the fact that you don't have an enforcement policy for this one. So true. you don't necessarily also true. It just makes it a little clunky to me. But do you have a suggestion for a change? I would just strike it. Oh. And add um, like they I mean, should clarify? You, like I, I guess how would you strike the phrase or strike yeah, the Yeah strike the phrase and the the three. It. But I'm not sure what you would write because I'm not sure what you're trying to make the directors do. We're not trying to make them do anything. Or that's what my intention was not trying to make anyone do anything. It was to provide guidance. There are other policies that we've adopted where there are things that are essentially providing guidance, reminding yeah. people that there's something, this is something that they should be doing. Uh, I'm thinking specifically. Um, I'm trying to find it. I'm pretty sure in the rules of order there was something specifically. Um, so, yeah, I'm just not sure what you want the directors to do in the sense that, so they just got to an event, right? And they're about to start talking to people at the event. Do they have to say that they're not represented every time right. they begin a conversation? I'll, 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 I'll continue this. So, like, um, I. Well, I, I read this initially to mean, for example, that if I am going to um, a meeting of LAFCO and I provide public comment on something, that I, I make it clear that I'm not representing the district. But what if I go to, and this, is, this happens, I go to a meeting of the California Special Districts Association and oof, I'm just smoozing. Do I need to, as, as just got brought up, every time I go up to somebody, say, uh, I was not directed to be here. Um, I, I am not the official representative of this, <laughs> of, of my district, mm -hmm. or is it just uh, only if it ever comes up with relation to um, uh, an actual issue related to the district? Yeah. Like, how does, how does that end up? So. Well, yeah, yeah no, I, I see what you're saying. Um, I would just point out again that there is nothing in this policy that says you have to do anything. Right. No, I was, but I was wondering, I guess the question here is whether you were hoping for something in that situation, in which case it is it, it gets exceptionally <laughs> clear, I think, when it's just a general event as opposed to like a, a, a meeting where you introduce yourself. Um, so, meeting yeah. event or hearing of another public agency, private entity, non <coughs> corporation, public or private group, or other public or private gathering. Yeah, it's pretty extensive. Yeah, and then the California Special Districts Association meetings are actual like, yes. like meetings. So. Yeah, exactly. So I actually have some language that I think would help in this situation. Um, so when the director attends a meeting event, yada yada, gathering on their own behalf, and make a widely publicized public comment, they clarify that they are not there on behalf of the board. Okay. 
the issue that was being brought up with relation to associated students, I don't know if I even call that a public comment. That would, the, like, the, the, like if Ethan goes to associated students and you're like there at the invitation and you're possibly giving a presentation it's on the status more update report, yeah. report. Yeah. So. Oh, but then, but that, but that's not, but, no, but that's, but then that's you're not, not even because Ethan would be directed. Yeah, that is, that is directed. The that's exactly right. Yeah, so it would right. Yeah, be so. under this yeah. policy. Um, and it's and 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 the person who's not officially there um, is hopefully not in a situation where they're getting a report. Like I would only be giving a public comment if I were. At yeah, that's that's so. exactly. That's correct. Andrew. Um, so maybe I was still on the. Public, public comment. I was thinking strike public to say widely publicized comment uh, in relation to the board's activities. Because then you also cut out comments about random stuff that does. Do you see you need to do this? Do you like the idea? Do you? How would that phrase look? Could I see that uh, right now? Sure. That's, uh, I, I, that's not what I wanted. Ooh, there we go. The right one. <laughs> Was it a good faith? No, no. not even. They just make a end. widely publicized comment. Um, There we go. Yeah. Activities. They make an effort to clarify. Clarify that they. Clarify that their thoughts and opinions are those of themselves and not of the district. Themselves. Them? It, what? No, you. Their self? Theirs. Oh. Thoughts of their self here? So. Their self isn't a word. I know, that's why I'm confused. Why am I putting their self? self? No, because it's selves is. Oh, I see. It's, yeah, it's, it's okay, self. it's singular. Self. Is that not a word either? Is it themselves? Themselves is a word. Themselves is, the, themselves is possessive. That's why, that's why I use that. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that the, are the thoughts of yours are the thoughts of themselves, are the thoughts of Ethan's. Yeah, but but it's there should be an right? apostrophe, right? Oh. I thought that that was there should be because an because it is a pronoun. It does not have much like its or yours. There's no apostrophe themselves. No apostrophe. Well, the the policy is the policy is plural. When directors or no, when a director. Never mind. Ooh, am I that wrong? Yeah. 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 But like if you said theirs or you said its or you said yours or you said it's only when you have a. Uh, um, a proper noun, you'd say like, uh, or, or you have like a concrete noun, you'd say like uh, Ethan's with an apostrophe. It's still supposed to be themselves, though. So is it two words? Themselves? No, just themselves, because it's a single director. When a director goes. No, it's 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 that if you take the word themselves and you make it a possessive pronoun, no, I am arguing that it becomes the, the word themselves. The thoughts and opinions of are those of themselves. Are those of themselves? It's not. It's just like, are those of Ethan's? You wouldn't say those of Ethan. You no. say those of Ethan's. You don't say those of you. You say those of yours. And so you say instead of saying those of themselves, you say themselves, which I'm arguing gets it's converted themselves. to themselves in English. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 I was looking at dictionary. Awesome. Grammar but I, outside, outside of the grammar, I think that this language <laughs> is actually really good. Oh, um, okay, all right. I was waiting for yeah. you to say that this language is so bad, why are we even discussing the grammar? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> what about the widely publicized part? Um, I think we could start the word widely, because I feel like the word widely could just get used against people. Not sure, but the term publicized isn't defined, so... Yeah, I think just... widely publicized defined? Is right, that, because, yeah. so... How about just make, it just seems like an unnecessary modifier. Makes a know? statement related to the board's activities or makes a comment, just taking out the publicized part. A comment related to the board's activities, they make an effort to clarify that their thoughts and opinions are those of themselves, not the district. Yeah. 
You didn't say of, and it's actually sounded better when you didn't say of. Yeah. What do you think? I think this is good. Oh, but now if you actually wait a second. And what was the original? If we could go back to that real quick. The horrible corner case of grammar. Um, what was the original was here. Well, I think with this one it says, like in general at the event, clarify that you're speaking on your own behalf. With the other one, I think since it says comment, it's, it's like, it sounds like anything you say you have to clarify. I think but only if it's related, related to, the to the board's activities. activities. Right, but if I'm at... All right, you're uh, at the CSGA meeting and you're talking to, to Jeff Morehouse and he asks you a question about something related to this. You make it clear that, well, I'm not here. I mean, just to be clear, this is, this is not their opinion. This is just my opinion. And lay it out. It's not, it's not widely publicized. It's not yeah. even publicized. It's just, it's just yeah. like, you know, you speaking to one guy. Yeah, I was thinking more, though, like, I go to lots of social events with many other elected officials. Okay. Um, and I speak a lot about what we are doing. But humorously, you get to say whatever you, you are the official representative, according no, to No, because I, I have <laughs> to attend these meetings. But in specific, but specific, specific, you, in specific you, yeah, no, I, I know. I, <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Um, so. Makes a. Um, That's why I liked, I liked the other one. It was simple. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess you do. I guess I do see what you said. Because the other one, it was like specific to the event. I feel like this one's specific to the comma. I'm actually starting to wonder if the issue is that is that like if, you know, I'm, I'm still back on this horrible grammar issue. And so let's say, for example, that it was in mine. It actually, I think in this case, it would be of I. No, of I. I think it's because you actually get hit with that object. You wouldn't put I in the policy. <laughs> well, no, I'm just I'm providing an example of like of like instead of saying mine, I think in this case the thoughts are those of I. Are theirs alone and not? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Could you put of theirs alone? I like that. Okay. <laughs> so, no, I'm. All right. I mean, Ethan's, Ethan's not even for the entire concept, so. <laughs> I'm not like extremely opposed, I just. I'm neutral. I'm like, I actually, I'm not, I'm not like fighting for this version, so. Um, I think, yeah, just strike everything besides theirs alone after opinions. Are those of? Every, everything but theirs alone. Oh. After opinions. If the thoughts are theirs alone. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's even less clear to me. So Ethan's, Ethan's vaguely against, I'm honestly neutral. I'm not fighting for I, this. I like are you, do you prefer this concept or the, uh, like that, like with more grammar fixes or do you prefer the uh, original good faith? I think I ag agree with Ethan in and of the fact that at least the original in good faith clarified that if you are making, well, can you go back to it for a moment? That, like I was okay. That when you are so. attending a meeting, you make you 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 make the good faith effort to clarify that it's on your own behalf, rather than specific to the comment. Where, like each time that I make a comment, do I then have to re say it, or not have to, or should I then be re saying it? Yeah, and, okay, I, and I think this is kind of in line with like you were at the IBCN meeting the other week. I said, take this as a report from the board president. Uh, I'm not going to say anything that's 
particularly uh, slanted, but uh, these may not be the same views as my colleagues. Uh, and with that, like everything I was, I was pretty much just providing my understanding of what's happened and not really any direction with things, but I just wanted to be clear that, hey, I wasn't sent here, so you can take this as an official uh, report from the board president, but nothing more than that. Um, yeah, sorry to keep banging this nail down, but I still don't think that it's very clear in terms of like what you're supposed to do. So you just got to a meeting. Now, some meetings have introductions where you can say, I'm here on my own behalf. Um, some meetings don't. If the meeting doesn't, then what do you do? Do you have to say it? I, I, I would then say, will you make a good faith effort to maybe when you bring up a comment, like when it, it comes to you making a comment about something that you state that I just want to be clear that this is my opinion. So we're back to doing it every comment? Or at least a good faith. I, mean, I think if you did it once during the meeting, yeah. you made it clear to people that, you know, uh, you, could, you could actually say that, like, um, so just be clear, I mean, as I provide comments during this meeting, I mean, I, I am not, uh, I'm not the official representative of the board. I'm just providing comments on, on my own behalf. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? This does actually, we can't leave it how it is because. Okay. All right. I'm cool. sorry. Because now I'm, I'm really thinking about it. Like, because it says, attends a meeting, event, or hearing, um, including public or private groups gathering. Like, there's been plenty of events that we all attend where uh, they recognize, oh, Spencer Brandt. I love the community services district director. Yeah. Jonathan Vood over there at table five. <laughs> when when everyone's City college for <laughs> trustee. Not representing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Because this is saying particular to attending a meeting and yeah. So yeah. it should be when a director makes a public makes a comment makes or a back. Statement. All right, all right. So yeah. Right. So let's continue. Wait, wait, it. but go to go oh. back to the other one, the simple one. When a director or staff member m makes a statement at a meeting. Instead of attends a meeting? Yeah, instead of attends. And then we do like a fusion of the two? Is that what you're proposing? No, just makes a statement. Oh. <laughs> makes a statement at a meeting. Now it starts to start getting to that territory of, well, is it every time I make a statement? Or is it just like, because at least when it was attending, it was like, okay, during, I, I can like explain at the beginning of everything. Like, by the way, I'm really, I'm, I'm neither representing nor am I even particularly representing. Wait, yeah, and this, and this <laughs> top one doesn't even have the clarification that the statement is something that is related even to yeah, the statement. <laughs> <board. laughs> Just to be clear, this is not an official board uh, statement. I would like to go to the bathroom. Is <laughs> that something I can do now? Yeah. Well, I think, I think the kind of issue that we're, at least I'm imagining, is because I'm sure that we've all been in meetings before of, like, where we're talking about things that are related to the community as a whole, and then someone asks a question about, oh, this, that, or about the CSD. Um, and then usually I then, in answering the question, say, well, I'm speaking on my own behalf and not as an official representative of the district, but this is the answer to your question. Um, and so, um, again, yeah, I. I would imagine, uh, yeah. Question. If, if the if the if the attends the event language is too broad in and of that it now forces you to do this every time you go to any of these events, and the makes a comment language doesn't clarify that it is only supposed to be like it can only be done once or if you wanted to only do it once like you didn't have to do it every time you made a, a separate comment then what we need is more specificity in how like the the timing of this um, when you begin your comments some sort of a phrase to that effect um, so if I could suggest we move to the second version and strike everything from attends to makes a comment. And then after board's activities, when at a meeting other than uh, when, and then clarify that it exempts your meetings. Wait, is there a reason that, because it sounds like kind of the same thing we had, is there a reason that we flipped it? No, no, you don't, you don't even need all of that. Just exempt your own meetings, and that's it. 
You don't need all of that public, private nonsense. As long as the board director is making a comment about the operations of the district, they have to clarify it, no matter where they are. Even if they're in their own bedroom, an event with their girlfriend. Or boyfriend. I thought that's what we were trying to avoid. Why? Because there's no reason to There's no reason for that. Why? If my girlfriend's like the reporter at the Daily Nexus, and she's like, hey, um, so what did you do the other day? Well, this isn't my opinion. Uh, this isn't the board's opinion, but this and this and this and this. She asked what you did, not what the board did. Fair enough. So clarify it. Like, you understand my point. What? Wait, so if, if, if my friend, if, if my housemate asked me what, um, Oh, uh, what's what, what's, what is the CSD going to do about lighting? Right. And I, I would be required under this policy to say, well, in my answer, this is my opinion and not the opinions of the thoughts and director. I feel like it gets, I feel like the, the policy, at least the reason that I put this line in there to begin with, was specifically for the purpose of making sure that people didn't go to specifically events where there is a large group of people and then try to misrepresent um, what the district thought about something. That if you're in your living room and there are like two or three people, that's a private gathering and that fits within your language. Private group or, or even private gathering. So you still have to do it. And I think you should still have to do it. Well, you don't have to do it if it's they make a good faith effort. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I would hope that a good faith effort would be to clarify. Otherwise, yeah. a good faith effort is to just not. Yeah. <laughs> so my okay, I, I my my not fixing or possibly unfixing the uh, wording of the kinds of events. Uh, I now have new suggestion for the wording of the end of the sentence. They should make a good faith effort to clarify that they are not representing the district and are only providing their own thoughts and opinions. It solves all the grammar issues, and it also leaves good faith in their but opinion. Why, why is all Can you type that up? I did. Meeting language. The top or the, the bottom? The bottom. I'm, sorry. I, I'm, not, I'm not messing with that one yet. Okay. The end of the sentence. They should make a good faith effort to clarify that they are not representing the district and are only providing their own thoughts and opinions. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I guess I'll clarify what my, my intention, so with the language public or private group or other public or private gathering was the situation that I was thinking in first off was a student group. They're not a nonprofit, but student groups, we may attend student group meetings and someone may ask us, hey, what are you going to do about this or that? And that this would at least remind people that that is included. Um, and then the language public or private gathering, um, the same goes for that as well. So maybe instead of that, we should just say student group, but I feel like the yeah. language also you like go to a home could apply group. to other things too. If I attend a left. meeting of the uh, Santa Inez Wastewater Conservation Group, uh, that's a that's a public agency. No, it's not. It's just a bunch of. No. Uh, it, it, it's just um, a bunch of people being banded together by. Uh, not a five hundred one c three. By uh, no, they, there's. It's essentially. It's just kind of like when we were doing yeah. the when when Jonathan set up those initial meetings at the. Uh, um, the food co-op. It, yeah. It's like that, where it's just, but it's just in, in San Inez. They just have a, a, a hundred and thirty people. They managed to bring to that meeting. Yeah. <laughs> so, but interesting. Yeah. Well, maybe then it's the language public or private gathering that is too broad. Question: Why are you trying to exempt conversations in your living room? Is this so that you can have like a? smoke-filled cigar lounge with your close no. friends and allies to discuss board policy? Like, I don't, well, we can't, dis matter? we can't discuss board policy outside of... Well, money, money with each other, but we can discuss board yeah. policy with arbitrary people. 
I guess the reason, again, is that, and the reason why I made an effort to make sure that this policy was, um, was suggestive rather than binding was so that it wouldn't be something, because I think we all have conversations with friends about what we would hope that the district would do. Yeah. And the intention I mean, you, you was you to say, make it I hope the district would do something, though. Isn't that a good faith effort? That that, that's where I was going. Making, yeah. making I statements, um, I, think, I think that clarifies. Mm -hmm. But again, I, even in this conversation, we've seen that that line gets blurred for a lot of people, and a lot of people might try to use a policy like this to attack somebody, and I wanted to avoid that. This policy, in my opinion, is mainly dealing with the public issue. Well, let's think real quick about, say, in local local government, thinking of a city council commenting on an issue, say, a housing issue. We'll have multiple council members um, going out into the community saying, I think this, I think that. I, I don't remember ever really regularly hearing them saying, um, I'm not speaking for for the, the city, but I think this. I think by them just saying, I think this, it's kind of implied I that agree. they're speaking for themselves. I agree. Yeah, you're not always officially doing that. If you're speaking to the public, you can't always yeah. think that. Yeah, and at the end of the day, also, like, if you're being introduced as your title, that is the title that you were elected to, and um, whether or not you say, you're representing the district, although a lot of times it, it would be appropriate and helpful for you to say w whether or not. Um, that still is your title and something that you can be identified in and something that mm -hmm. you can make statements with regardless. Um, but one thing that I'm looking at right now is the CSD policy manual of the Jarupa Community Services District, <laughs> wherever that is. And, uh, I've seen this one. It's, it's simple. Section 9, representation. And essentially what this does is it cuts out the clarifying like venues. It just says, when expressing opinions regarding any aspect of district business, it is requested that board members shall state that they are expressing their own opinions and not representing the board as a whole, unless, directed, unless so directed by the board or unless otherwise expressing official district policy mm -hmm. as expressed by directors. I think the only thing that's more clear in that one is that it doesn't have all of those events listed. But maybe it well, we're I mean, if we put that on the screen and compare it to those, we would still be having the same issues. I feel like, yeah. Even though it is, it's basically the entire policy that we have, without any formal procedures for choosing like who that person is and for what things they get. That I guess that is implied though. It says unless so directed. Or unless so directed by the board. What was the? Can you give me a few words from it again? Say again. Can you give me a few words from it? Representation. Yeah. It's not the right manual. I can send you the link. Can you oh. Do you want me to Facebook you, or how do you want me to get to you? I would prefer if you could give it to me via mechanism. Even if you gave it to me, I. I oh, I can put it on here. Quickly put it here because you already have to get rid of this URL at some point. Is that right? Section nine. And as you see, they have the suggestive language too. In and yeah, of that, it, it is says requested. it is requested. Did we request Ethan to? talk to associated students or did we only indirectly imply that he's allowed to by setting it up as No, I was we, directed, we, we directed by the board as also board. stated in the oh. policy. We directed line, line three says yeah. directed. Right, but we did direct you at the board. We did. did. Okay, good. Right. Then we, then we can, I wouldn't want to end up in a situation where we where we, we switch the policy yeah, yeah, yeah. and suddenly we, we break the thing yeah. at the board. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, and what we have is pretty closely in line with this with the exception that there's more specificity into like it instead of this one which comes at it from the angle of you should always be doing this 
unless you get directed by the board. We have, this is how the board directs someone to do something. If you haven't been directed by the board, then this is what you should do. So it kind of reverses the, the framing of the issue. Let's go back to what was drafted. I'm I'm not too opposed to this. Which one? I'm looking at the the second one. Is that? Yeah, that's, I agree. Yes. Can I request that the event language is struck? You mean I mean this, this word? is essentially the same as the Jerupa, You're but You're saying with this word? No, no. no like you all of yeah. Um makes the a valley one specifies Oh, it's just, just whenever yeah, so it makes they so So that would be what that would look like. So for what it's worth, I think that it is. And when I make when I make comments with friends and family, they are very eye focused, and I think it is I pretty agree. clear what's going on with them. Um, I I think I think I might agree to like with removing all of that because essentially it just starts turning into like you start going through that list and you're like, well, does the thing that I'm I'm dealing with apply to any of these items in the list. This is just like, no, it's pretty clear. You're always under this policy. What if this policy is to just say, like, directors, when making a statement, must speak on their own behalf unless directed by the board of directors? Does that fulfill kind of what we're trying to get out here without putting unnecessary um, requirements on the directors to to speak on, on their intent? If it's just a policy saying, um, it? it's basically just a policy saying all of the procedures that came before this that specify how the official representative is selected, if you're not that person, then you can't try to be that person. Yeah, it's pretty much saying if, you're, if you haven't been directed, then you're speaking on your own behalf. So what, what, what's the word? I mean, I gotta pull up old language real quick. Old language is right here. Uh, no, I'm referring to something else. Oh, the, the original policy. What about Spencer? If it was to just be one director, staff member, attend meeting event or hearing of another public agency, private entity, nonprofit corporation, public or private group, or other public or private gathering, they are gathering, they are attending on their own behalf unless directed by the board of directors. I yeah, I think I think that generally accomplishes the same thing that I hope to accomplish when I put this line in there. All right, so this wording, I still have those two, yeah. So this wording was when a director attends a meeting, temporarily leaving that in there, um, they, it was like It's a little different in and of the, it doesn't specify a certain thing that someone should be doing that then someone could take and so did I catch that this is approximately what you're talking about? Yeah. I took out the clear. They should. Clarify yeah, yeah. No more. They should. The language of they should is gone. Yeah, that, that's it. Oh, you had it. Like, yeah. They are attending on their own behalf.
How does anyone else know that if they haven't read the policy? I thought the idea of this whole policy so how was does to... How does anyone know that they should be saying that if they haven't read No, no, not, not, not should be saying that. Um, so let's say that I'm at an event. And so before the policy, the goal was to require me to make other people know that I'm not the official representative. Now, it's simply the case that I am not. And hopefully everyone else at that meeting has read the policy and knows that. But otherwise, if they're confused, you know, they didn't read the policy. They should have known our, they should have known our policy. Well, the goal of the original policy wasn't to require you to do anything. Well, to make it a good was, faith effort. It was essentially, I mean, you know, it was the right. best practices, yeah. per se. Yeah, could make a good faith effort, though. I mean, like, if you didn't make, if you, if you made a, a half-assed effort, as it were, that would, that would be against the policy. Can you go back to that one? Yep. If we were to just change that second one to when the director or staff member speaks about the board's activities rather than makes a comment, because then it's not specific to a specific particular comment. So what we're adding here? No, 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 no second. One that speaks about the board's activities. Jonathan. I have an idea. Just been listening to this whole thing. That's cool. What about something like no director shall officially represent the district unless explicitly allowed to by the board and go off of that? Yeah, so that's kind of what I was That's kind of like what in line with what Ethan yeah. was yeah. just and recommending. Say, directors must, if they're speaking about it, must qualify that their opinions on their own. Well, that's well, we're trying to avoid point. the must language. Oh, so then yeah. take that out and sleep. No director can represent the district unless explicitly allowed to, and then if they do represent the district, then they've broken this policy, but if they go and say, I think this about the CSD, then they haven't broken the policy. Like no one can go bring them to the board and say, look at this person, look what they said here. This is not allowed. As a, the director then can say, I said I, and they break the policy. But the whole point of the policy isn't so that people don't break it, it's so that the, the public doesn't misunderstand director's comments. So the point of implementing this policy is so that the public is more informed about what directors are saying when they're saying it. That's, that's not why I brought it, or why I wrote it. I wrote it as a guideline for directors. That if this is the best practice would be for you to inform the public that you are not speaking on behalf of the district. You are speaking about your own thoughts and opinions. So the public is informed, though. Like the reason to have such a policy is to make certain that the public doesn't get a misimpression about. Otherwise, you don't even need any of this, and you can just refer all questions about any of this to the fact that nobody is a representative of the board except the people that are. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. Right, but you but don't that was, need anything. Yeah, that, that, that was my comment there, is at that point, you're just assuming, like, if the, if the goal was to make it so that the pe members of the public weren't confused, then now what you're simply saying is, well, they should have read the policy manual. If they'd read our policy manual, they would have known that Jay isn't an official representative. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lot of districts even have a policy like this. It's just yeah. like an understood yeah. thing that you don't represent them. Like, it's in the community service district law that no director represents the board, and the board is a unit, not the individuals are. It's like a common practice. Just, just yeah. putting it out there, when, when I actually go so far above and beyond, I will usually explain that like, you know, the official policy of the board is, or not official, the official position of the board is X. I disagree in this way. <laughs> um, and That's so if there's a concern about this sort of thing, like, I don't know what the concern was, but. Yeah, well, in light of that, I mean, maybe it is the case that this, that the policy manual isn't the place to speak about best practices. And maybe we don't need to have this clause if it is something that is already, if it is something that's already implied by the fact that we've adopted a policy about how a representative of the district is selected and what they do when they are selected. 
then maybe it is maybe it is just simply implied. So I prefer informing the public to that line of thought. I would rather you guys have a policy that essentially asks board members to please inform the public of the fact that you're speaking from your own position. <coughs> Oh, actually, call it the deny. Yeah, John. So you can force someone to say something, but you can say that they are. You can't say a board member has to use this language, or has to use this qualifier when they make statements in public. Like, there's no. That's a freedom of speech violation to say, like, you have to say X. You can say you can't represent the district, and then you go and do represent the district or try to. And that's not allowed. But you can't say. To speak about the district at any time, you have to say, I'm not representing the district, but like, that's, you can't make that a rule that someone but has that's to That's not what we're trying to do. I think that's, isn't that what you just said? No, no, You said, we should inform the public. I didn't say how you should inform the public. Well, but by saying you should inform the inform is different than the original you language. You your policy manual. Say, yeah, what I said is you can't require a director to speak a certain way. You can prohibit them from doing something. I think you can't say you have to say X. But that's how I understand what you're saying. I mean, huh. then every single other policy manual we've looked at would be violating the Constitution. And I don't believe that's the case. Well, no, enforcement of it would violate the Constitution. But requiring somebody to say something is equivalent to simply disallowing them from saying anything and hoping they really want to say anything. Also, <laughs> uh, no, the like fact anything else. that the law is unconstitutional um, is based upon the fact that the law exists, not on the enforcement of that law. Jonathan, what is the goal? Yeah. Yeah, we, we have had some confusion. Uh, the best practices. Yeah. The, goal, yeah, I, I, the goal is to have something in this policy manual that says this is the way that you should make, you should make, well, it is what it was written as at the beginning, which is that directors, when they are speaking in a public context about things closely related to the board or tangentially related to the board, should make a good faith effort to tell the public, I'm here on my own behalf, these are my own thoughts and opinions, in the same manner that I think many of us do when we go and speak at the County Board of Supervisors or the Isle of Community Network meeting, um, up to this point at least. Uh, now we have a board representative. Um, and it is not, it's not to say you have to do this, because saying you have to do this would, as you were saying, like be requiring someone to do something a certain way, and then like that, and that policy could be like used against someone who like let's say forgets to do that. If someone forgets to do that, then that's unfortunate, and they didn't use the best practice, but it's a mistake. But again, that has to do with the enforcement of it. I don't think we've ever spoken about enforcement. Until, like, it's not about enforcement. It's about people. It's about people trying to like nitpick someone for an honest mistake. At least that's how that's I see. That's why it. good faith isn't there, right? Yes, exactly. That's why I originally wrote it. But what we I mean, decided. It's in, the, in the layers as well. I put it back. Yes. Yeah. Oh, this this uh, this, 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 this was my suggestion. Um, but with the possibility of removing the parenthetical, which I actually now agree with removing the parenthetical. The double parenthetical. We've got circles on this. What, what are you thinking? I think the biggest thing that's clear is we have to take out what was approved with the attendance meeting. Like that's probably yeah, the yeah, biggest yeah. I, I agree. I agree. That was an oversight. Um,
Wait, so you were commenting on the parenthetical? No. No. <laughs> no, I, I, I support taking out the parenthetical. You support taking out the parenthetical. All right. Or, oh, oh I'm sorry. I meant, hold on. Oh, now you, you want to take out the parenthetical, the, the, the staff member? No, 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 no. Okay. No, right. no, when when you said taking out, I thought you meant, like, deleting the... Parentheses? The two parentheses. Right. Oh, yeah. really? Okay, yeah, no. I was... So, uh, Gabe was requesting to remove it, and I started to agree. And the reason I started to agree is that oh. effectively this is just turning into a laundry list of different kinds of things, and it is trying to be a very comprehensive laundry list. And at some point, I'm like, you know what? I think that especially with, with the having added back, which I did, the good faith effort part, I feel that um, when, I am, when, I, when it is currently the case that I'm the one concerning right, idea you brought up, speaking to friends and family, um, I, 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 there's a lot of I in there, and a lot of comments about other people differ, whose opinions differ, and I don't think that there's any confusion about that. Um, and so at that point, you get to just say, in all situations, you gotta make a good faith effort that you're not representing the district. Um, what about if you're to say, in all situations? I didn't use the word, I'm just saying like, if we just remove the specific situations, leaving it to be all situations. Right, whatever. but if, yeah. okay, so if we remove the specific to yeah. be all, how about instead of saying, they should make a good for faith effort to clarify that they are not representing the district, what if it was to say, they should speak on their own behalf and not They should speak ah, on, I like on their own behalf. I like that. As they are not representing the district unless directed. Because then you get that phrase in there that is the speak on their own behalf phrase, which is the original phrase that, I mean, is the common phrase for people to use when they identify. And perhaps that should be unless directed as specified above, since this is a policy on that, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm back at the fact that so now any director can go in front of the associated students and start speaking on their own behalf without qualifying that they're not there representing the district. Like you yeah, essentially the struck the phrase, uh, I'm here at this meeting but not representing the district, which everyone says. Yeah, but, the but, the but they could still do that there. anyway. They could, they could they still do. To, right? Now, now all you just They never had to. They never had. They at least had to make a good faith effort that it wasn't confusing. Now it's simply a matter of, um, I, on your yeah, I mean, like clearly I'm speaking on my own, on my own behalf, um, unless I add the wording um, that states that uh, according to the entire district or something. But practically, there isn't a whole lot of difference. The difference is in the in the wording. I disagree. You're not you're not clarifying anymore. Before you were clarifying that your comments don't represent the district. Now you're not clarifying. Now let's take a really let's take a really concrete concrete issue. Why not? So I'm at the LAFCO meeting, and if they had not made a three word mistake on their agenda, they probably would have said, "Jay, what is your opinion on AB 722?" and called me to the stand. Now, I am the kind of person who would state that the district has a one opinion and that that is not the opinion that I am representing and that I would provide a personal representation of my personal opinion and things like that. But what if I just started speaking and said, this is, this is, even if I said my opinion, well, I don't even have to say, I just started saying, like, you know, started going off on 8722. Um, well, I think that's that, a, sort of a, that's, that situation in particular is a, an issue for a separate policy yeah in but regards to like um, the I think that's similar to this. that to me that's it and, and to me it's it's a matter of like um, th making it clear that I was supposed to make it clear that I am speaking on my own behalf solidifies that I would do that I mean I go I try to go above and beyond on that sort of thing but like yeah. Maybe you want to specify that and I thought that was the goal of this was essentially to make a hundred percent certain that um, if somebody like me was at a CSDA or at a uh, LAFCO meeting and that AB 722 came up, that it was clear that the, you know there was a six to one vote and I was not like, you know, the, this is the opinion of the district, this is my opinion, and they are not the same. But, but um, even if you didn't use yeah. the clarifying, um, speak on my own behalf, which is not representative of the district, um, mm -hmm. even if you weren't to use that, you'd still be saying, 
like I statements, right? And not saying yeah. the I love to community. But you can imagine. I'm, I'm just I'm just imagining a situation where it could feel confusing to somebody were it not to have been spelled out. And I thought that was the goal of the having this clause at all. Like that was to me the goal of the clause. Yeah, well, in your situation, what they like with if it's a LAFCO meeting and they yeah. say, um, you know, if we're going to take a position on AB seven twenty two. We have directors from the I Love Us Community Service District in the audience. Uh, let's go to public comment and see what they have to say. That's a great way of putting it. Then it's framed in such a way where I, I see what you're saying, where it can be imagined from other people who are in the audience that, okay, this is the official view of the district because they use the district's name instead of saying, Jay Freeman is here, let's see what he has to say, yeah. implying that it is Jay Freeman on his own behalf. Jonathan, do you know if your board has a policy on this? It doesn't. Most boards don't. Yeah. Yeah. It's not important. Usually, it's just an informal, like, let's appoint this person to be the representative to X, and that's it. I mean, I, for what it's worth, I mean, I, I would think that, particularly knowingly, but without even making some kind of good faith effort to do it, would just be kind of like a really bad sporting thing to do, to like go to such a meeting and make such a statement that confuses people. Right. Um, that sounds just horrible. I think yeah. all I'll say is the reason my board doesn't have a policy on it, the reason probably a lot of boards don't, is California law is a policy on it, which says no director speaks for the board, the board is the speaking right. entity. Like the law already makes this clear. You know, can do well, wait, wait, if it describes it like that, no director speaks for the board, I don't know if can we direct a director exactly. to speak for the board though? Yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. <laughs> okay, but, all right. but like no director in their individual capacity Okay, all right. As a director speaks, like you can't just say, this is what the board, like that's what California law already says. I'll look up the exact provision. Okay. And I think perhaps rather than, right now it's they should speak on their own behalf, rather put it, they are speaking on their own behalf. Other gathering on their own behalf, they are speaking on their own behalf. Or, well, we can take out their, that first on their own behalf. It's I don't even speak on their own behalf. So two things. Um, number one is, uh, I don't remember. I guess number one is the fact that I have to go in 25 minutes, and I'm the member of the public that requested the rules of order agenda. I don't think you had to leave. Um, my actual comment was, yeah, um, about policy, so I don't, the law states one thing, yes, but I think it's the job of policy to clarify the law for the directors that don't go out of their way to go and read it, which an I argument That's an argument that Natalie made during the full board meeting that right. I actually did agree with. Which is actually a reason why boards are explicitly demanded to put conflict of interest policy into place. Not because they are creating the conflict of interest policy, but because they're directing their board members to read it. And so. We also could decide that any of these are an improvement over what we have, decide to vote on that, make an improvement, and then look at this again with uh, fresh eyes at some other point. Say that again? We could also just decide that any of these versions maybe are better than what we mm -hmm. had right before. Uh, just put it into place because, um, I, 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 as I've stated on various points before, I tend to vote yes when I think that we're making an improvement as long as we aren't making mm -hmm. some, doing something horrible. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then we can look at this again at a subsequent meeting um, uh, and to see if we have any better thoughts. Okay, but then should we vote to recommend to repeal that third and so one Our option is that we could repeal it, or an option until, is that we can take either the second repeal or third and replace. <laughs> repeal until replacement. <laughs> yeah, so we could we could repeal it, or we could decide that either number three or number two are better than what we had before. But we can't move forward with two of them. We don't like two? Okay, so we'll decide that number three is better yeah. than what we had before. I no, no, I meant we can't move forward with two a possibility. Yeah, well, we would have to amend policy. We would have to amend policy three to state this. 
that's how you. Would my, my, my my comment is is that um, if if two or th I'm like I like two or three I I um, I'd be okay like I would vote yes on either of them and then but I could see maybe one of them is better than the other that doesn't to me mean when I when I vote yes on one of the two it does not mean that it is the best option it means that it is better than what we had previously and it is not bad. Gabe, I would also like to point out that you could just table this until your next meeting. Yeah, we could just not do anything. Because I could actually see one of the older board members being quite annoyed at the fact that you keep bringing back the same policy and it keeps changing a little bit and a little bit. By the way, that is actually, I would probably, even though I think repealing it is an interesting option, I probably would vote no on repealing it just because of what the, what the other board members would do. They would probably be very confused as to why are you repealing this? So <laughs> for right now, it's... I think it's not like a functional oh, you don't, policy. Yeah, but that's, is, but is the, I, I agree. I don't think problem? we can. I, I do oh, think so I because I think it's really easy for us to break if it's just saying attending a meeting. There's plenty of things that I attend and I don't clarify. Okay. All right. Yeah. I am. If we're gonna favor one of them, do we favor three? Because I agree that it's better to make progress. Which one's three? This one's the third one. preferred the good faith effort from before. Right. Why does Spencer Clarify. dislike two? No, it wasn't that he disliked two, it was that people didn't like having they didn't understand the coin flip. Um, yeah. I I am okay without the clarification, but I do prefer the second wording. So the, the main difference between this, the main difference between the second wording and what we had before is that it adds speaks about the board's activities at um, as, and thereby clarifying that it is not just that you are attending a meeting but that it is that you are actively speaking about board activities at such a meeting which is what we have in number three as well right but number three loses the specification that you should do anything about it right but didn't you just say you're in I'm okay I, I'm, I'm okay with that I I'm just saying that by the way I lean slightly towards two and if okay. you agree with Gabe you don't have to then you might dislike three I'm actually I am I am okay with removing the request and doing either two or three I would vote yes on either of those Okay, I have a motion. Okay, is it related to three? Yeah. Okay, then uh, I'm going to start typing in here. Okay, I move that the board of directors amend the following policy titled external representation Section 3 to read as follows. When a director or staff member speaks about the board's activities at a meeting, event, or hearing of another public agency, private entity, nonprofit corporation, public or private group, or other public or private gathering, they are speaking on their own behalf as they are not representing the district unless directed as specified above. Is there a second? I second. And I'd like to amend my motion okay. to um, the, the Board of Directors amend Section 3 of the following policy. So just moving that Section 3. That's friendly. It's a good amendment. Of the following I was actually policy. wondering why you could do Maybe that. just of the, of the policy yeah. title? I was thinking of that too. Okay. Okay. Wait, did we, did we decide that entitled is the wrong? No, list? you're actually right. I looked oh, it I up. Am. You are. What? So I don't know English. Cool. Okay. <laughs> None of us know English. I started that using title. I know I, earlier. within the past week, <laughs> I like wrote entitled and struck it and wrote titled. I don't remember in what context. <laughs> okay. Can you public comment? Yeah. Um, I'm just going to clarify once again, this policy does absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. um, Correct. Like, you could have no policy Correct. and it would do the same amount as this policy. The only policy that would actually make sense having is the one that Spencer 
uh, clarified in terms of like if a board member is called up by another agency and asked to speak, they should actually clarify. Mm -hmm. That's the word that should be used. They should clarify that they're not speaking on behalf of the district. Otherwise, this is just a waste of time. Like, it's a waste of an hour and a half. I don't, I think, our, I don't think our really time's been wasted. Just put it on yeah, I, I disagree. I think the existence of the policy is a good in and of itself because it, it, if the if the entire goal of the policy manual is to put things that are already codified in law in writing so that board members have to read them, um, if I was a board member and I read this, then it would become abundantly clear to me that when I do go to a uh, meeting, event, or hearing of another public agency, private entity, nonprofit corporation, public or private group, or other public or private gathering, that it would be necessary for me to clarify to people that I'm speaking on their own behalf. Um, I'd be very surprised if other people read that differently. Okay. Or so came, with that or came to the conclusion that they didn't then need to do that in order to be in compliance. Okay. Or in order to be following me, to be a good director, let's say. Should it then maybe to make it even more clear, change the tense rather than they are speaking on their own behalf, change it to they must speak on their own behalf, as they are not representing, the, so maybe they must speak on their own behalf as they are not representing the district, unless directed as specified above. So you have to speak on your own behalf, you can't speak, you can't claim us, you have to speak on your own behalf. I think that's pretty clear there. I like this wording better. Is that friendly? It's friendly. Public comments? I like I think, yeah, I think it makes sense if you speak on your own behalf, unless yeah. you're asked to not. You do, you do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You do, you. Uh, That's what the policy is. All in favor? <laughs> Wait, uh, is there uh, a, we just did public comment. There was, I mean, he oh, yeah. really didn't seem like he, yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion passes 3 0 at 8 45 p.m. And we can look at this again, which is the great thing about this. That's not the right date. I can, actually, I can fix it easily. It's here. And moving on to agenda item. Agenda item five. Consider replacing our policies on board meetings with Robert's Rules of Order, requested by the public. Particularly requested by Dave. Member of the public has requested that we seriously consider enacting Robert's Rules of Order as the basis for our meeting procedures. For this item, we will review Robert's Rules of Order, see attachment, discuss the benefits and downsides, and potentially enact a form of these rules. Um, the main thing I'm going to say is, is that my I, I'm a big advocate for meetings being something that people understand. I mean, I would go so far as to say that I would like to, I mean, I'm never going to succeed in getting the support for this, but I would like to ban jargon from the meeting. Um, like, I, 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 when people say call to question, it's not even more, sorry, it's not even fewer syllables than say, can we vote now? Um, and, <laughs> and, and, and when you're in the member of the public and you're like, I don't, what, I, like, uh, there's like, there's just like this game that they're playing with all these complicated field rules. Um, and Robert's Rules of Orders are a lot of rules, which I, the reason why I provided this like that um, attachment in particular, by the way, was because of less formal procedures for small boards, which I appreciated, um, which was a section in here talking about modifications to Robert's Rules of Order um, that can be made in order to make a small board function better with these with the uh, Robert's Rules of Order. And uh, an example, which I think just kind of demonstrates Robert's Rules of Order is being designed for a different purpose, a member may raise a hand rather than stand when seeking to be recognized by the chair. Because Robert's Rules of Order, I guess, actually requires you to stand in order to be recognized by the chair. Um, I, I believe that we would end up having to make a number of modifications to Robert's Rules of Orders to not make it feel like an onerous set of rules that would be designed for a very large number of people. Um, and so I am currently against replacing w our rules with Robert's Rules of Orders, um, Rules of Order. Um, but that said, uh, I think that there was some, I, there's something to be said for the fact that this is a cohesive codified set of, not like, she, that Robert's Rules of Orders is a cohesive codified cons internally consistent set of rules and that um, 
there are potentially problems with the way that we currently have. To, I, I have received a number of complaints about our board being heavily chair focused. Um, and that's not something that I'm concerned with right now. Um, it's something, but it's something that I've been, I, I was surprised how many people pointed that out to me. Um, and I, this is this is a mechanism of like, you know, it's a very large internal consistent mechanism that also is designed to protect various uh, subgroups and it's got rules for how the mo um, amount of debate that ends up happening to ensure, like some of my complaints about making certain that people actually have some debate. Um, it, it clarifies um, how tabling operations work because like, um, like we've, we've, we've had some things tabled and this makes more clear when and how long things get tabled for. Um, it's something that's kind of like a shortcut to a lot of rules. I, they just they just squick me because I don't like complicated jargon and lots of rules. Mm -hmm. but when, when you just said the chair focused, was it as in the chair is too, too much of the chair involved in the discussion. order of the meeting? Or the chair just, was that related to the order of the meeting or no? I, I, maybe when you say word of the meeting, I mean, is that, that essentially the chair has a lot of discretion in order to, for example, uh, s um, stop the discussion or to move to a vote or to, uh, I don't know, maybe you're one of the people, I, I, I honestly don't remember if you were one of the people who said that to me. I know I remember some of the people who did say it to me, but you're raising your hand. So. I am also not sure if I said it to you. Okay. But I do have that feeling, and it's essentially the fact that you can do almost whatever you want because your policy doesn't limit you. So if somebody says call to question, that's not defined, and it literally just means, Ethan, do something. Or if somebody says, is that friendly? That's not defined. It just means, somebody, say something else. It's well, is that friendly? We do require in our, in our policies that if there's something to be amended, it means both the first and the second, so I do think that part's defined. Yeah, but I agree. So it actually mentions friendliness? No, but it's, we all understand what we're. That's just a piece of jargon that people It's jargon, yeah, maybe I people shouldn't like use that. But you know. Because to amend something, you don't just need to, so a friendliness is, what, so if you want to amend something, and it's friendly with the first, then it's instantly amended. No, and the second. Because we're not under Robert's rules, we're under the yeah, fair enough. procedures but, that we voted on. But if it's not friendly, you could just vote on amended. Absolutely. Okay. But we've been able to do it without voting. Very understood. Friendliness. Which, yeah. So, but, I mean, without using that friendly jargon, it's, Establishing consent for Fair consent enough, or right. agreement. Um, but there are other examples. So literally anything like a point of order. Do you have points of order defined? What are they? Do you have points of privilege defined? What does that mean? When Natalie says I reserve my right, what does that mean? It means nothing. Exactly. And that means that you define everything. Essentially, when somebody says something like that, you control the meeting instantly. So Natalie says point of order. You can decide whether to go to her. You can decide whether to keep it on the current speaker. You can decide anything you want. Yeah, well, I mean, when... Which is unrelated to the jargon. It's just, right. it's, just, it's, right. it's just the jargon happens to be a way that people are communicating with each other because they've been involved in meetings in the past. But right. I mean, I think the biggest thing right now is there's only two members who follow these these procedures as far as being recognized by the chair. I agree um, 100%. And it's funny because the other members are the most critical of there being no order. But there's only two directors who actually try to be recognized by the chair and try to create that cue for orderly discussion. Um, I mean, that, that, that was my thought going into this. I think some things can be better defined. But right now, people are still learning these rules. And uh, I don't want to say choosing not to follow, but not following. Um, yeah, that's an interesting point also is, is that like, I mean, just from a practical perspective, um, to try to now go back to the board and say, here's Robert's Rules of Order. It's so much more complicated than what we've been doing, mm -hmm. which you haven't been doing. <laughs> can can yeah. you please read all of this one? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, I agree. But I agree. And I, actu and I actually, I mean, and maybe there needs to be clarification with folks in the public who think that the meeting is chair-focused, because I think that could mean a number of things. I think it could be a comment regarding the order, or it just could be a comment regarding the chair introducing items, which isn't necessarily a procedural thing, it's just the way that we've been doing things. Um, because I would actually disagree that the meeting is very chair-focused. So, um, at least from the way that you 
I'm not even bringing it forward. Right. I, I mean, yeah, if you're yeah, interested yeah. in learning more about that, I can try to actually learn more about that and bring it back as an agenda item in some fashion right. at some point in the future. Yeah, so. and the only time that I really introduce items is in the absence of someone who was particularly interested in in the item, like if like mm -hmm. when you've brought things, or when you're the policy chair, you introduce it yeah. when you bring things. Mm -hmm. um, I've really only, in, other than the, the policing discussion, I've really only introduced the more uh, routine items or items that I've brought. I do, th um, I, I, I do think, though, as I mentioned, that I think it's interesting to learn more about these. And I'm also going to be honest, and I've not learned enough about them even yet. Right. Um, and, I agree. Uh, and so it's because it, this knowing that this is a cohesive set of rules can also guide us in the construction of our own policies. Or maybe one day we will have, maybe one day soon, we have the epiphany that these are actually really, really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. But well, this to me looks like homework. I yeah. think, given yeah. that you said that you, I, and I certainly don't think that I've um, taken a, a close enough look at this um, to be taking any action on this yeah. as it stands right now. But I've definitely received requests um, or comments from the public not to go to Robert's Rules of Order just because of the distortion of commonly understandable proceedings. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. Um, I actually argue the opposite. I don't understand how it would distort anything. Essentially, it just defines some certain key phrases, and those phrases are sometimes used as point of order, point of privilege, etc. But the discussion goes on the same. The items are still discussed. Public gets public comment. Nothing really changes besides the key terms that you use once in a while to get the chair or the board to vote or do something in particular. Motion to amend is still a motion to amend. But here's one thing. Like I've, I've atten when I started attending UCSP AS Senate meetings, I had no clue what the heck was going oh, on. That was so confusing. Um, like there, they follow Robert's rules to the T. It's not as accessible for lay people, so to say. Um, and 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 the, and the rules they have on, um, which I, I think are like for example, um, think Gina came in order to speak on an Isla Vista related item and. Um, there was some agenda modification that needed to occur in order to allow for enough time for public comment and uh, happened, to, happened to be Natalie who was the person who's running the meeting. I just watched the video of it and who happened to run the meeting and she start, immediately starts going into a bunch of little motions and things or any changes and Gina was like, I don't understand what's going on. Uh, is this yeah. like, how is this? What? And, then, and then Natalie clarified <laughs> yeah. what happened and Gina was like, no, that's not going to work for us because what, what, what she had done is she like moved an item to the end <laughs> of the meeting but used a bunch of terms and process to do that and it was just, and Gina's like, yeah. we're all going to leave and so it was just like, it was, like, it was so confusing Confusing, no one could track it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But again, there are two very juxtaposed opposites of the spectrum. There is a middle ground, and that doesn't condemn the entirety of Robert's rules. Just condemns. I don't think any of us are condemning the entirety of Robert's rules. What we're saying is that we don't know a whole lot about it, and our first impression is that when we see boards that follow Robert's rules to a T, what we see is something that is very confusing and inaccessible to the public at large. So we probably should have done it before this meeting, and it's probably horrific that I will admit also that I did not do sufficient before this meeting, um, but um, would you be okay with us doing some more research on this and then talking about this again? Certainly. Okay. Very much so. And does that satisfy any, because you also have to leave. Uh, and yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I think we're all happy then. Cool. So is there any other public comment before we move on from this agenda? Uh, hearing none, we are now on agenda item six. Consider recommendations on meeting procedures and operational policies standing agenda item. At this time, we will consider making recommendations to the Board of Directors regarding policies and procedures of the district, including but not limited to duties of the board, roles of officers, meetings, rules of order, board meeting conduct, Brown Act compliance, agendas, actions and decisions, minutes, communications, and technology. Gabe, do you have, are you able to, like, are you have to leave right now, or is it in five minutes? I have, like, two minutes. Okay. Um, one of the items that would fall under Brown Act compliance issues here is that there is a, um, we have three interns who might need to file FPPC Form 700s, and that also might now fall under the Bob's comments on our conflict of interest policy needing to have a um, uh, actually the thing that we punted before which is the set of employees that would be um, listed under what kind of disclosure policies yes. and defining yeah. disclosure yeah. policies so, and, um, and, and all I, could, I have like three different comments on this now so number one one of your policies is actually illegal um, the policy states that um, it's could you pull it up it's employees but the employee is qualified designated employees that's actually a legal term it's not just designated employees. It's all employees. 
Interesting, okay. Yeah. It's, so it's I, not all employees. Yeah, well, I know yeah, this okay, question so before. It's not all employees, I misspoke, but if you actually want me to define all of this now, essentially what happens is that the interns aren't designated employees, but they are employees and they still must file the form. They're not so all employees. Your policy, they're not employees of the district. They are. They are. No, they're they not. are under a joint employment contract with the University of California and your district. No, they're Just not. because you're not paying for them doesn't mean they're not employees. I can prove that to you in a court of law. Okay, next we'll comment. Just um, yeah, I would actually like to make public comment uh, concerning meeting uh, public comment times. I was actually really upset that I wasn't extended, even though there were only like two other people in the audience at a meeting that had no public attendance and only went 30 minutes when your other meetings have gone hours and hours and hours long. So the fact that I wasn't given three extra minutes was actually really upsetting, especially when I wanted to clarify for the board's sake, not my own. Um, and yeah, I don't remember number three. But it wasn't about the FPPC form 700? Oh yeah, so it's not just 700, it's 804. So your board has to file form 804. This is serving as notice to your board, so if you don't manage to put it on your May 2nd agenda, that is actually not uh, able to be um, put on an emergency, uh, on as an emergency item. So you really, really need to make sure that's on your May 2nd agenda, otherwise you're really, really fucked. Um, that form needs to be filled out and completed before the month of the interns is up, which is like a week after that meeting, which means you need to file it, it needs to be approved, you need to get the information to the interns, and the interns need to file 700s by the end of the next week, essentially. Is that all your comments? Yeah. Thank you so very much for your input, and we will discuss this. And that was all in the, in the realm of creating a policy for this, right? Just Correct. to clarify. Because, um, I believe that we would actually, because this is a policy modification to the conflict of interest um, thing with relation to the employee list. And this uh, agency report of new positions would actually define the set of positions that would then have to be in that policy. Um, but um, regardless, uh, we don't have to talk about that. Yeah. His well, comment. Well, I just want to make sure that we're not breaking the brown act right. here because he yeah. he fired off yeah. a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, right. And we can't speak to the validity of all of that. We no, can only we speak to making policy. Right. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> it's really interesting. Yeah. Okay. So. We'll so I will I will say if we wanted to just sort of move on that in regards to uh, financial disclosures. So I, I have a jumping off point for the financial disclosure policy that I can share with uh, you all as well. Okay. If you would like. Um, and I will share this Google Doc right now. If it must be to Sorek at gmail.com E Bertrand so um, I'll introduce it by saying that this is something that was uh, made at the request um, in large part by Bob Geis who was upset about the fact that we did not have um, or that when he contacted the county elections office to submit his form 700 they told him well, we don't have any sort of a policy from the district that we're filing this against um, like essentially saying um, like what is your purpose for giving this to us other than state law. I guess normally they keep copies of the specific policies uh, and normally there's a filing officer who does the filing on the person's behalf rather than just individual directors submitting the form 700s to county elections. Um, and so what this policy is modeled off of um, is Goleta Water District's um, code of ordinances. They have a financial disclosure policy um, and that's essentially what this is as well. It's the way I titled it, financial disclosure. Um, it has a purpose. Um, it speaks about um, the statement of economic interest, which is the Form 700, um, and it has uh, the designated positions um, which must file statements of economic interest. It also, very importantly, this is the thing that Bob was really getting at, has categories of disclosure, um, and um, those categories are clearly defined um, it speaks about additional positions, um, and it also specifically mentions uh, conflict of interest and procedures for, um, explicit, it explicitly states, um, when you shall not take part in any decision um, and when you shall rec recuse yourself. Um, and um, it also has a provision about uh, contracts. Um, 
and it also has a provision about employees and consultants. Um, so I'll give you I'll give you a second to read over it, or if anyone All has right, any so initial comments. Purpose. I have one thing that, oh, yeah. and if this, I mean, I th I think it is in line with this, but just thinking about some of the comments we just received, I I'm a, on paper an intern to a legislative a member of a legislative body, a paid intern who's actually employed by that jurisdiction and under their financial disclosure policy, they don't want to know anything about my I'm kind of under the impression that some that the it's if you have an employee, for example, who will be managing your books or if you have an employee right. who will mm -hmm, be mm -hmm. um, uh, working on on an investment structure. Like there are things that like have that that there are certain kinds of things that have to be disclosed, like right. where you have a disclosure. Um, I, I, the, I think the question for us would just be whether or not, because we have such wide sweeping jurisdiction over our individual interns, whether like we need to make certain that we don't use our interns in ways that would require disclosure. Right. Um, and, uh, and knowing what those would be, but that's not something that we can, that's not policy, but but it would be yeah. policy if we were to. I'm just talking about it in terms yeah, of Yeah, it would be policy though if we were to business. actually designate them, then we would be making policy for that. So it's an interesting thing. It's like if we decide we want policy, then it becomes a policy discussion. If we, or if we decide we want to do it, then it becomes a policy discussion. If we decide we don't want to do it, then we just shut up. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just talking about it in terms yeah. of this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> All right, so we've got purpose. Um, political Reform Act requires state and local government agencies to adopt and promulgate conflict of interest codes. The Fair Political Practices Commission has adopted California Code of Regulations, Section 18730, which contains the terms of a standard conflict of interest code. Section 18730, together with an amendments here and after, adopted by the FPPC, is hereby incorporated by reference. I'm okay with the purpose. Statement of Economic Interests, Director, District Directors and Designated Employees, Contractors, and Officers shall file statements of economic interest with the Isla Vista Community Services District upon the forms, upon the forms, using the forms? Oh, I guess you file it by, you, like, like the ink goes up on the, upon the form. Uh, uh, I don't think that's what you meant by that. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll say that, again, it, this language is in large part um, copied from and pasted from Goleta West. Uh, or I'm sorry, yeah, Goleta Water District, and they, and they use that and term, I, and, and we just want to like we just we just want to rely on their yeah. lawyers. I'm okay with just saying you know they had a lawyer, we don't. Yeah, and that was actually <laughs> so. something that was actually something that I was that okay. I was about to bring up. Actually. Okay, designated employees, uh, contractors, and officers who make or participate in the making of decisions which may foreseeably have a material in effect on economic interests uh, are off. Wait. Wait, there's a new verb. Designated employees, contractors, and officers who make or participate in the making of decisions which may foreseeably have a material effect on economic interests. That's just a noun. Wait, it, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> they had lawyers, but they did not have people who knew English. <laughs> it is possible that I messed that one up. Let me see if I can go find Goleta Water. I would, have, I would have guessed it would have been like an officer's are those who make or participate in the making of decisions which may foreseeably have a material effect on econo economic interests, which also is my understanding of the ways in which we would have to have a financial disclosure. Um, so That would make sense. I'm, I'm going to go and look and see what it says. Mm -hmm. Upon receipt of the statements filed by persons holding designated position as defined here and after, the secretary shall forward a copy of each such statement to the Santa Barbara clerk recorder. Makes sense. So, so now that puts the, the burden on the secretary rather than the, the director? receipt of the statements filed by persons holding designated positions as defined here. Yeah, that You're right. It should have said designated employees, contracts, and officers are those who make or participate in it. Okay. Cool. And so, are, um, and so it is okay that, that essentially what, then what happens is that if we have employees, they would be filing forms with the secretary and then the secretary would be filing their forms with the clerk recorder? That's correct. And that's also notwithstanding um, any other action our board may take in the future to um, set up um, with the California Secretary of State's um, website so that directors may electronically submit these statements, 
or and I'm not even sure as to whether or not that would be the filing officer electronically submitting these statements or whether it would be the directors themselves electronically. And it wouldn't be um, with the Secretary of State, it would be directly to the county. Yes, but I think, this, I think that the portal is with the Secretary of State. Okay. Our, ours, the one we used at Parks was local to the... Okay, so whether it is with the Secretary of State or with the county, um, some sort of an electronic way of filing. Okay. Because, I mean, all, the, the way I filed my Form 700 is I printed out a copy, signed it, put it in an envelope, and mailed it. Um, that was I, I went to the office. Yeah. Handed it to them. I would have done the same thing. I was yeah. in Los Angeles oh, at the time. Sense, yeah. <laughs> I was in Santa Barbara, but just wanted <laughs> to mail it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just, like, yeah, I really wanted to use a stamp. I just, I just, I just so distrust the support. <laughs> I just support. Yeah, no, I know. I know. I, I, know. I, I would have done the same thing. Yeah, I know. I was thinking about that too. I was walking around downtown LA, like, where the hell do I buy stamps and envelopes? Right. Um, Persons occupying the following designated positions must file statements of economic interests on forms provided by the FBDC and make those disclosures consistent with California Code of Regulations, section section eighteen seven thirty at SEC. Directors, direct general manager, secretary, treasurer. Attorney. And that I think fits with the concept are those who make or participate in the making of decisions which may perceivably have material effect on economic interests. Categories of disclosure for the purposes of this listing of categories of disclosure, the following terms shall have the meanings set forth herein. Business entity means a commercial for profit entity. Business position means a position with a business entity. Entity. The threshold for reporting is an interest with fair market value of two thousand or more such different amount as the FPPC regulations shall specify. Of. Here, let me go down and see. I might have typed that up incorrectly. Uh, but really quickly, before we move on to that, can yeah. I go? So I also just oh, wanted yeah, sure. to state the other positions that the Goleta Water oh, District more, okay. included, uh, but some of them were not applicable. So there's also Assistant General Manager Administrative Manager, Operations Manager, Engineering Manager, Water Supply and Conservation Manager, Chief slash Civil Engineer, and Controller. Those were their designated, those were other designated. Interesting. Do we have a list of designated for the Park District? There, there is one. I'm sure. Effects. Is this a meeting procedure or operational policy? This is Brown Act compliance. This is, this is, an this is not, it's not Brown Act compliance. This, isn't this is not Brown Act compliance. Uh oh. Okay. So let's go back to our policy, our agenda. Do we specifically have an agenda item for the conflict of interest? We did not code have an agenda for the conflict of interest policy. It was not forwarded by the board. It was in. No, I mean like when we first attention. adopted it. When we first adopted it, I did have an agenda item for it, but I had, but I had manually agendized everything that I, like... Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but there was an agenda item, right? Yes, there was yeah, an agenda item for it. Policies and procedures of the district. This could be a duty of the board. I know, but then there's also a thing. We can't, like, as nice as the... Um, Description, you're right. It's about the title. No, but Wait, with, really? with the description, okay. as far as like the including but not limited to that 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 like was okay with uh, the rules of order because like you know, we're, we're, we we're, 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 we're not relying on including but not limited to. We're we're looking at the okay. list, and so is it is this a duty of the board? I think that's overly vague, though. All right, and so maybe maybe we can't talk about this. Do we consider this well, to be sufficiently important that we want to make a special yes bring meeting it. for this? Yeah. A special meeting or a special agenda item? Well, a special meeting to handle it in a timely manner. Can we even discuss special, special meeting of the yeah, of the board in, or in a special future. meeting of the committee? Of the committee. Of the okay. Committee. And not of the board. They, they'd hate us. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was going to say, I don't think I'd support that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, going into this, I forgot, I, I got yeah. the FPPC confused with the Brown Act momentarily, and so I was like, well, it says Brown Act compliance, but no, we're, we're, we're screwed on that. Yeah, yeah, sorry for jumping the gun on this. Yeah, one. well, I'm, yeah, I'm all sorry. So we are not talking about this, right? 
That's what we decided? That shaking your head means that we're not? Correct. Okay. Um, Agreed. Is there anything else that we have to talk about under this agenda item today? No. I don't believe so. I don't believe I have anything new. Do you? I do not have anything. Wait, there was something. But I think we have a ton of down. homework. I had one question with relation to uh, minutes, um, which is uh, we do not currently have any policy for how what to do with minutes. And I'm going to say that as somebody who's a compiled minutes, I sometimes get confused. Like, am I supposed to put the minutes, both like the draft minutes? Do I hand the draft minutes to? When when I do the, do the draft minutes get attached with the agenda? Should they have been attached with the agenda? Because I'm so bad at that. Should the draft minutes have? Should the fine? Where do I send final minutes? Maybe we should have policy for this. Mm -hmm. We should, and and what we could do is expand upon the minutes of district proceedings policy okay. that That's we do right now. Here, there, minutes of district proceedings. Okay. So yeah, so right now it only says that the secretary of the board shall keep, oh, that's, yeah, that's taking the minutes. Not, not that you are holding on to the minutes, but that you are taking them, like you were writing the minutes. Okay. Yeah, this is a policy in regards to board meetings, not in regards to committee meetings. It only said district proceeding. Oh, but yeah, this is special. Yeah, but this is just up the board. Yeah, that, that was my comment I was going to make that we didn't actually have a mechanism for committees, but then I realized it's just you taking the minutes, not. Um, yeah. Me or my designate. Yeah. So, what's your idea, Ethan? Oh, that we expand upon this. Okay. We? All I was saying was that we do have this okay, space right. on the side, too. So you're thinking maybe we just like we just add an E. Okay. Uh, we don't need any of this. Okay. E. We don't even have a mechanism by which meetings minutes are required to be taken from committees technically, right? We don't. There's a question of whether or not this would be something that would go under our existing policies regarding committees or whether it would go under the policy that we have. Well, we need it for both, right? Or we at least need it for the existing, since there's nothing. Well, well, the pol yeah, we need a policy for how to take minutes for committees. But what I'm saying is, would that policy go under this one or would it go under committees of the board of directors? I mean, we could put it either place, and it would still do the same thing. We could abstract secretary of the board to the keeper of the minutes and then we could specify that the keeper of the minutes for the board meeting shall be the secretary and this keeper of the minutes for a committee meeting shall be the chair uh, and then we could define for example that the keeper of the minutes is capable of or their designee which we don't even have in here like actually it just says that the secretary of the board shall keep the minutes it does not say that the secretary of the board or their designee you know I think that's actually a really good idea um, and this entire if this is copied into here and start. And if this is something that I mean, I know we have food for the secretary. We should just read through it really quickly and make sure that we would work for committee chairs as well.
by the committee chairperson, right? What's the official title? The committee chairperson, you said? designation will be by the secretary. Don't you mean be the secretary? It will be made by... The secretary could designate themselves. The secretary could designate... Oh, oh, okay, okay. John the designation the will be made himself. by the secretary for meetings of the board directors and by committee chairperson for committee meetings. Okay. Or what about, though, if it was just the secretary of the board or their designee? But then we have the problem of there are committees that exist that do not have the secretary involved, and so are they really going to from a Well, then maybe put that as a second sentence. So if you, the were to have, no, sorry. if you were to follow it with, in the case of committee meetings, the committee chairperson or their designee shall keep minutes. My only thing here, though, is because it, it's it sounds very unclear with who's going to be taking the minutes. It sounds like it could be anyone. Well, uh, and then to, be, to be clear, right now it sort of is anybody. I mean, it's like no, right, it's now, it's the secretary of the, right now it's the secretary board. Well, no, I know, but, but in practice, we, that is not the, we've been violating that policy. Like at our last meeting, it was Jonathan keeping the minutes, and at our previous meeting, it was Darcel keeping the minutes. And so we, it, it, it has been somebody, and I'm not saying that's a problem. I'm saying that, that we should, if we want to deep doing that, we should have the rules reflect that, right. and the rules should therefore allow jo Wait, Spencer can you go to, back to what the, Jonathan. Can you go back to what it originally was? Uh, it originally said, the secretary of the board shall keep minutes of all regular and special meetings of the board of directors. So what I've been interpreting keep minutes to mean is that I am the one who approves the, the minutes. I, or I'm the one Well, the who, board approves the minutes. Well, the board approves them and makes them from draft, but I'm the one who keeps and maintains them. And if there's a designee who assists in that, even if, as at this point, the designee has been very informal, um, then that is how it works out. I see what you're saying, though. It is kind of ambiguous. But, I mean, as far as keep minutes, I, I feel like that's holding on to them and being the custodian of them. This isn't even talking about writing. Oh, well, so that was the, my initial question. Is I started reading this thinking that it meant that Spencer was holding on to the Which minutes. You are, yes. you know, but is that what, but is that was that what this meant to say? Is that you were that's, holding on? Yes, to I believe so. Yeah, I don't think this talks okay. about anyone. Okay. Given the fact that that verb is ambiguous, I think we should change it at some point. Yeah, I, 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 I think it would, I think it would be good. I liked the today. direction that we started to go and where we started to talk about how the secretary of the board or my designee will actually do the writing. Yeah. And then the same thing goes for committee chairpersons or their designee. I think it's a level of clarification that is good. One thing we need to keep in mind though is who can be a designee. We, we are going to need to define the policy for that. Like if it's someone who's a member of the board or if it's someone who's not, and if they're not, are they volunteering for us? And if so, are we liable for them? Oh, that's an interesting question. Are they Are you sue us, Jonathan? designees. Like that part makes me think we might need to set up like a policy for that before we talk about designees that are non-board members. That's fair. So do we intend to tackle that today? And if not, I would suggest that we do make whatever minimal modification, oh 
See, I could see the argument of we should either decide that the policy is correct. No, I take that back. No, we just don't. Yeah, we decided that keep means hold on to. So we right now just don't have a policy on who takes the minute, and so we don't. We aren't technically in violation of the policy, nor are we directing ourselves to do anything that could potentially cause us a liability issue. We just might do it anyway. Okay. Just every time I read keep minutes, I confused. I have to keep it coming myself. Okay. Um, We should have this as an agenda item in the next meeting. All right, let's do that. Okay. I agree. There any other comment on this? We have the wrong agenda. Do you want a specific agenda item since it's already agendized? Yeah. 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 Let's, okay. let's do a specific agenda item. For cool. Um, and okay. actually, I will keep my. No, let's get rid of all this because we. No, yeah, I think in general, going forward. We should maybe get rid of this number six and okay. just do. All right, so let's. Are we done with item number like, six? Okay, no public comment on item number six. No action yeah. taken. Moving like on to item number seven, future agenda items. Request to have future agenda item. Uh, well, let's just get rid of the standing agenda item. Yeah, I think in the future we should just be a little more specific just because this one has so many things listed under it, which can ultimately end up being difficult to navigate. Yeah. Um, I would add a future agenda item consideration of modifying the conflict of interest policy and adopting a well, more. Do we want to do that as a special meeting of our thing? Like, is that something that we really need? To, like, we want to tackle ASAP, or is that something that we just want to do in two weeks? Um, well, I think our board, the board of directors, needs to hear it immediately. So, do we want them to hear it? Well, I guess we can't really discuss the merit of it. Um. That's an interesting problem. <laughs> Let's just place it on for our next meeting agenda. Okay. We'll I'm fine with that. We'll see what the board does. I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, and so are we agreed to just talk about that some more again next time we, yes. uh, we handled that one. Yes. And we were going to talk about this more. There was something else. I thought there were two things that we were going to come back and talk to you about. Could we agendize the uh, work plan template? We can well, within that, that we, are you we, can, we can phrase that a little different. Because are you just trying to go over the? I'm not talking about. To I'm not talking about adopting work? policies. I'm talking about adopting it as our work plan. So adopting a work plan for this committee. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, why do I think that there were two things that we agreed to come back to? Oh, we, no, we, we did. We, we, we had said that we were interested in thinking about this again to see if we had any more thoughts. Was that right? Yeah, and the other thing was uh, just meeting procedures uh, and yes. rules of order. Rules of order. Those were the two things. I should also relook at rules of order? Yes. That's slash decorum, right? No. No, okay. Mm -hmm. I feel like decorum is a very, very, what very is rules small. Yeah, decorum. What is rules of order then? I'm sorry. How we, go, how we go over our meetings. Oh, okay. Like that was one option of that is Robert's rules. Oh, yeah, okay. So, so that's one right, option is I'll, what we already I'll, have in place. Okay, I understand. Yeah, so. it's just a generalized. It's not referring to a specific Yeah, policy. I had that separately, so I moved that into there. There we go. That makes more sense. Thank you. Yeah. But also, but rather than just considering replacing our policies, let's also see on how we might improve our policies for ex okay. the existing policies. Yeah, that's right. So I, I, I put it down as, for my notes as a parenthetical on that. So it'll yeah. just be general rules of order, and then one possibility is to look at, um, you know, I like you're worrying about it. Uh, Improving us. Yeah, just because I see on this one here, even though we had it in the blanket item number six, mm -hmm. how it was written, it was just replacing. Yeah. Okay.
Or rather, no, just agenda items in general, right? Not just getting things on the agenda, okay. but full policy. All right, this is a fat stack of homework, and I like yeah. it. All right, any public comment on next? Oh, Evan, I have a comment about an earlier item. I just want to provide new information. Okay. Do you, do you have any more public comment on future agenda items? No? Okay. Um, what is the previous agenda item that you would want to comment on? The external one. I just found language that might fit. Um, I'm going to say, how about you bring that back to our next meeting? Um, because we're going to re-agendize yeah. that anyway. And we actually had members of the public who were here talking about that item. Um, so it's not even like we were just alone doing it. So, uh, and um, all right. So uh, I think we are now ready to go on to agenda item eight, which is to adjourn. Anyone want to move to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. OK, Spencer, Ethan, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes 3 1 uh, at uh, 929. 3 0, right? No, it was 929. It was just, I just waited until it hit a minute. I was just waiting. Three oh, 3 0. Three right. zero. <laughs> I was just how annoyed at doing it at 928 p.m. <laughs> <laughs>